All right, John, I think we're ready to start. Hey, well, welcome everybody. And uh, thank you for being here tonight. We um, have put together three separate uh, sessions, not for the purpose of renewal, but for more of uh, best practices and probably some caring and sharing uh, as far as adjudicators and responsibilities when it comes to ethical responsibilities and just what we have experienced so far with Solon Ensemble uh, MPA during this very interesting time. Uh, we have uh, some great folks here that are going to be able, like I said, do some caring and sharing and hopefully we can develop a best practices from all of this. Uh, so the first, uh, the first one that's going to be up is Dr. Josh Bula and he is going to talk us through all of our technical uh, considerations when it comes to uh, doing this through the computer or with different technology. Um, then in the next hour, uh, Brian Sullivan and Jason Duckett will speak to us in reference to um, Solo and Ensemble. And then finally, Ian Schwint and uh, don't tell me, uh, Jim Matthews will be joining us for the concert uh, slash jazz uh, MPA best practices for uh, assessment during a, a pandemic, in which case I hope we never have to refer to <coughs> any of this again. So uh, without any other delay, Dr. Beulah, uh, the floor is yours. You're muted, Josh. Sorry, okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, all right. Good evening, everyone. Um, and I'm gonna just talk about the technical aspect of how virtual MPA is integrated into MPA online and what you'll need and the processes that you'll go to or go through for judging the solo ensemble and the concert MPAs online. Starting with the equipment that you'll need, a laptop or desktop computer, obviously. Um, I haven't tested it much on an iPad or um, Chromebook or anything like that. So if, if possible, it might be possible, but laptop or desktop computer is recommended. The, um, the newer, the better. The video conferencing and video playback requires encoding that is kind of processor intensive. So the newer processor that you have, the easier that's gonna be for your computer. Mac or PC is fine. For the webcam, most laptops have webcams built in, but if you're using a desktop computer, most of them are not. So you might need to buy an external USB webcam. Um, most of you are, have been doing Zoom meetings and stuff like that for a while now. So um, but, you know, if you're using a different computer than you normally use. Obviously, you're going to need uh, to know that. For the microphone, if you're going to be like in a solo ensemble situation where you're going to be demonstrating a lot for students, a uh, tabletop condenser microphone is probably going to give you the best quality. A lot of the built-in microphones, like in MacBooks, are, are fine. Some of the older laptops or you know cheaper Windows laptops don't have as good quality of microphone built into them. Um, so I would recommend looking into some kind of a tabletop condenser microphone. There's a company named Blue that does a lot of, uh, they make a lot of high quality microphones. The, there's one called a Snowball, I think, and then there's one called the Blue Yeti that seem to be kind of the industry standards. So if you're looking to buy one, um, that's something to look for. Or if you've just got something like what you or most of your districts use for all state auditions, the uh, XLR microphone into the USB adapter that, that'll work for you as well. Um, and then headphones or high quality speakers, especially with the concert MPA, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're not just listening through the, your laptop speakers. You wanna you know, get some high quality headphones or high quality speakers to be able to listen and hear as best as you possibly can. And of course, good internet access. So if you've got a cable or a DSL modem at home, that should be fine. If you're at school, just make sure that 
if, it, if you're judging on the weekends or something that the school doesn't shut off their internet when the, you know, after school hours. So make sure that, you know, when you're going to be having the, uh, having the MPA that you have good internet access, don't go to Starbucks or any kind of a Wi-Fi hotspot that's public and the tethering on your cell phone might work okay in certain areas that might not work in other cell coverage areas. So I would recommend sticking with a DSL or cable connection that you have at your house. Um, so I put together a quick demo video. Um, let's see here. Just kind of, to kind of show you what the process is from MPA online how the judging process goes. So I'm gonna go ahead and just play that for you now. Hello, this demonstration is an overview of the process for judging a virtual soul and ensemble music performance assessment through MPA Online. Start by logging into MPA Online and then go to your adjudicator portal. Click the bookings button to go to your list of all the MPAs that you are contracted to adjudicate. And for a virtual MPA, in place of the site address, you'll see a button that says judge this MPA virtually. Your schedule for the virtual MPA will appear along with buttons to join the meetings with each of the students. But first, notice the virtual FBA office link at the top. Obviously, it will say virtual FOA office for orchestra districts and virtual FVA office for vocal districts. This is an online meeting room the district chair will keep open throughout the day. So if you have any problems and you need to contact the district chair, you can just click that to connect with them quickly. It will also be used if you have an adjudicators meeting with the district chair before the MPA begins. Next, we're going to talk about joining the online meeting with the student. But first, let me encourage you to do this way early to test it out. It's not going to let the student into your online meeting until their exact performance time. So log in and do this a day or two early just to test it out and make sure everything will work for you. I recommend doing this test using the exact computer you will be using and while connected to the same internet connection you'll be using for the actual MPA. You may be thinking that it's better to do the judging from your school because they may have better bandwidth and fewer distractions than at home, but be aware that some school networks are really quick to block websites they don't recognize, so you should definitely test it out first. Also, check with your school's IT people to make sure that they don't turn off the network on the weekends. It's common for guest Wi-Fi to be turned off on the weekends, so if you're planning on using your personal computer, be aware that you may need to use your school computer instead, or be prepared to drive home real quick if it doesn't work. But again, test it a day or two early from the same computer and same internet connection you'll be using, and then test it again an hour or two before your first student is scheduled. Click the Join Meeting button for your first student. It takes you to this virtual meeting room. The first time you come here, your browser will ask you a permission to use your camera and microphone. Click Allow. You should now see the video from your camera in the main window. And when you talk into the microphone, you should see a little blue or green light light up here in your preview window. This is the chat icon. Click it to open the chat window if you need to type a message to the student for some reason. For example, if you can't hear each other. The microphone icon is your mute button. You may want to mute during the student's performance just in case there are any background sounds that might distract the student. The little arrow button next to the microphone icon lets you select the input microphone. So if you have a USB microphone plugged in in addition to the computer's built-in microphone, make sure that your USB microphone is selected here. If the student can't hear you for some reason, changing the microphone here might help. The camera icon turns your camera on and off, and a little button next to it allows you to change the camera if you have more than one connected to your computer. When the student joins, your video will be in the upper right corner and the active speaker will be in the main window. If you prefer a grid or gallery view, click the four square icon in the lower right corner. The student's teacher may also join the meeting. Feel free to remind them to mute their microphone and video to avoid distractions during the student's performance. You can click and drag the small triangle that's outside of the video window to make the video smaller if you want to make it easier to see the music. The student's music should appear below the video window. Hover over it to bring up zoom controls and enable scrolling within that frame. If you don't see the music, it just means that the director didn't upload it in advance, but it will ask the student to upload it before they can join the meeting. So once you see the student in the meeting, you can click this link that says click here to view their music. You must stay on time. There is no hallway you can go into to tell upcoming students that you're running behind. So when you're out of time, you must end the meeting and join your next student. There is a countdown timer at the top to help you with this. 
It will turn red when you have two minutes left. So start saying goodbye to the student as soon as you see the timer turn red or even earlier. Remember, you may still need a few minutes to fill out your sheet for that student. And as soon as the countdown timer hits zero, your next student will be in their room waiting for you. When you're done with a student, you can click the red hang up button to end the meeting, but don't leave the page yet. Scroll down and click here to indicate the student did show up and perform or if they were a no show or had technical issues. If they performed, type your summary comments here. These comments will be instantly available to the director, but this is not a substitute for filling out the actual adjudication sheet. Some judges asked for this so they can copy and paste links to online resources that might help the student, but feel free to just say, see the adjudication sheet for more detail if you prefer. If the student had problems and wasn't able to get into the virtual meeting soon enough to give you enough time with them, you can reschedule that student into one of your free time slots here. Just select the new time slot and then click the reschedule button. If you don't have any free time slots in the dropdown, just talk to the student and mutually agree on a time to have them log back in. You may also want to let the district chair know so they can change it in the official schedule. Then when you're all done, click this button and it will save everything you entered and take you back to your full schedule page. You'll see the status column updated for that previous student and then you're ready to click the join meeting button for your next student. Cool. So I see a couple questions in the chat. Um, somebody asked if they can access this from outside of the country. That shouldn't be a problem. Um, or it's running off of the same web servers, the FMEA website, and that's available everywhere. So um, yeah, you shouldn't have a problem as long as your internet connection is strong. No, no need for a VPN or anything. Um, also, Tim asks at this point, if we have not been invited to adjudicate, then are there still invitations that are coming or have they all been filled for this year? We, it's possible that um, as districts add and decide to do virtual MPAs that they probably will be hiring more judges and some district chairs probably do kind of wait until the last minute to hire some, some judges. So um, maybe John can talk to that later on if he knows any, any more details. Um, now I'm going to talk just a little bit about the difference between that and concert um, MPA because well, also that was kind of, we, we haven't incorporated the pre-recorded option yet for directors to upload or yeah, to upload video performances, but that's coming for Solon Ensemble. So in the, the, la the first couple MPAs we did, all the performances were done live through that web conferencing uh, page. But moving forward, I think we're gonna ask the students to pre-record and then upload their videos so the judge will just be able to watch the video while the student is, you know, while they're talking one-on-one -on -one with the student like that, rather than having the student perform live. That's gonna be the same thing with concert MPA. All of those are gonna be uploaded, pre-recorded video submissions uploaded to MPA online. And then that page, it'll be a similar page to what you saw in that video, but it will just have the recordings of each one of the pieces. So, you're going to need to find a way to record the commentary similar to as when you were in behind or in the back, you know, the back of the auditorium recording in a voice recorder. We're going to need to emulate that virtually somehow. One way to do that and probably the easiest way to do that is to just use your own voice recorder or if you've got a cell phone, the voice memo recorder in your cell phone will work fine for that as well. The thing is that you will need to be using speakers instead of headphones. This because this is because you want the music in the background. So when the director is listening back to your comments, they know what part of the music you're talking about. Then you'll be able to then transfer your audio file to your computer to upload it, or you can upload it using your iPhone through the MPA website. Just opening up Safari in uh, or opening up yeah, open up Safari, go to MPA online, and you can upload it through just right there on your phone if you need to. Another option is to use Zoom. Uh, so you can screen share with computer sound, record it to your computer, and then upload the audio MPA only file. So just a quick demo of how, how this would look. On Zoom, you could just use like a regular free account. You don't need a paid account or anything like this. You can create a new meeting and you're gonna be the only person in the meeting, but uh, yeah, join with computer audio. And then when you share, make sure to click share computer sound. 
And depending on what kind of computer you have and what version of Zoom you might have, you the option to just share music or computer sound only. If not, you can just share your web browser or um, your your screen or anything. It doesn't really matter. As long as share computer sound is on, then that's that computer sound will be in the video. And then you'll go to open up the video. I'm just going to use like a YouTube video as a demonstration here. So if you play the video, you can hear the sound. You might want to turn the sound down as low as possible for you to still be able to hear it and maybe turn it, turn up your headphones just so the, the music stays in the background and it'll be easy for the director to hear your voice rather than the music. And then when you hover over the menu bar up here, you can just start recording whenever you're ready. And you, if you've got a paid subscription that'll ask you if you want to record to your computer or to the cloud, I recommend the computer because that way the file will be right there for you to just drag and drop into MPA online. Um, this is just a personal account, so that's the only option is to record it onto your computer. So at this point, it's recording, and you, know, you can say hello. I'm Judge Whatever. I'm here to adjudicate you, and then you know you'll hit play on the video and start listening, and then start making your comments. When you're all done, then you can stop share and then end the meeting. And when you end meeting for all, it'll start converting the meeting recording and it should bring up your file explorer window. Oh, there it is. With the recording and that audio only M4A, that is your audio file that you'll drag and drop into MPI online. I would test this out first, so make sure that your levels are good, make sure that you, you know, you're not hearing too much of the audio or make sure that your microphone's not too soft and you, know, you want to get a good mix like that. So make those adjustments um, after listening to your test recording. If you need to, um, where's Zoom at? If, if, you need, if, you're, if you need to bump up your microphone audio a little bit, you can go to the settings in Zoom and just, you know, either automatically adjust microphone or move the microphone level up. Um, or if you need to move the, you know, make the, the audio in the background softer, just lower the, the uh, volume on that YouTube video. And it will be using YouTube in the background for MPA online. So when a, so it, it will be an actual YouTube video window that'll, that'll pop up for you to watch their performance in. Um, cool. So that's probably the easiest way to record your audio commentary is using Zoom. And then the other option is Audacity or GarageBand. Again, with any kind of recording software on your computer, you're going to need something in the background playing the music so that the director can hear the background music. So you'll need to use speakers the same way that I recommended with the voice recorder. There is some advanced audio routing software that you can try to figure out that will kind of route your computer's output sound in with your microphone sound and mix them together. But the, the ones that I've tried to, to, uh, to use are way more complicated than I want to ask you to deal with. So um, if you do want to use Audacity or GarageBand or something like that, just use speakers to listen. Just make sure they're high quality speakers so you can get a good read on, the, uh, on what you're hearing. Um, Linda is asking, how will auxiliary judges record their comments during the performances? Um, probably the same way. Um, the, because the, yeah, you're, I don't think you're recording video normally in a live MPA. So just the voice recorder or uh, Zoom or something like that, just so they can hear, they can still, they'll still need to hear the music so they know what part of the choreography they're in. But um, I think the auxiliary in jazz will work the same way. Are students able to send in a previous recording of their solo or do they have to do it live? Um, so what we're talking about is having the students pre-record their solo for solo ensemble and then watch it live with the judge. So the judge will play it. Um, the judge will play the pre-recording while they're in the meeting with the student and then you know talk about um, talk about it with the student there. Um, let me stop sharing so I can see the chat. Any other questions? For solo and ensemble pre-recorded performance submissions, it was said the judges and students would be able to watch, listen to their performances, then interact as normal with any verbal comments. Has this been set up to work through MPI online system 
to watch together. Sound source being YouTube unlisted link. Um, in that solo and ensemble web conferencing system that I talked about, there is no way to really sync the video to watch it along to where the student can hear and see at the same time. Unless you're playing the, the sound with external speakers, it'll play through your microphone in the computer. So um, that's probably the best way to do that. Um, what else? But can they do it either way? Correct. Oh, Jason is asking, can they do it either way? So I guess you're asking if they can do it live if they want or pre-recorded. That's probably a question for Ian or John. I'm not sure. It was my understanding that they're all going to be pre-recorded from now on. Um, okay, thanks, Jen, for adding the uh, links to the microphones. Are excerpts allowed and not solos from the FBA list? I believe we're talking, somebody asked me about adding the books, like the Allstate books to the list temporarily for this year, just for comments only. But um, that's something Ian can probably talk about. Um, are there any, this is a good question. Are there any paper sheets or are they all electronic? They are actually all paper. There are no electronic sheets at this point. So either the district chair is going to send you the sheets in the mail or send you a PDF file and ask you to print them out. So the, the, the adjudication sheets are still all paper. We have not included those in MPA online yet. Um, how early can I test ahead of time? As soon as the district chair sets the schedule and lets you know that the schedule has been set, you can go into your adjudicator portal and you'll see the schedule there and you can just click on any of those buttons to test at any time. So the only, yeah, the only limitation is that you're not going to see any students on that. Um, you know, after you click the button that says judge this MPA virtually, you'll see those students after the district chair schedules the MPA. So as soon as they do that, then you can go in and start testing it. Um, when we type comments, do the students get to see them or do they just go to the director portal? They just go to the, the they just go to the director portal right now, but um, the idea is for the director to share them with the students. So the director downloads a PDF file of those comments and can email them to the student. You know, they'll just email that PDF file. Could we fill out adjudication sheets electronically if we want a PDF, though, Apple Pencil, et cetera? Yeah, I don't see any problem with that. As long as you can you know, save it and send the completed one to the district chair, that should be fine. Will we have access to a practice file before MPAs? Um, you know, like like I said, the um, there's not really a practice file, but you can go in and practice uh, by by just joining one of the students' rooms early before the student shows up, just to make sure that you know you, your camera connects. If once you connect, if you see your video, you see you know I showed you in that um, in the upper right corner the blue lights flash when you when you talk. So you can check your audio and video that way. Um, and you can also, if you, there, the, at the top of your list, there's that link to the virtual FBA office. If you, you can click on that and use that to test just to make sure that the platform itself is working. And if you wanna test it with somebody else, feel free to just send that link to a friend or your spouse or something like that to just to test, just to make sure that the, that the web conferencing system is working. Cause that, that Virtual and FBA office uses the exact same uh, web conference plugin as everything else. Um, how do we let district chairs know we have participated in the session and are prepared to adjudicate? That's a good question for Ian or John. FBA sheets do go to the district chair, yes. Um, you can scan them or mail them. Just talk to the uh, district chair about how they want them to get to you. Um, yeah, scanning and email, emailing them is probably the best. Um, so for concert MPA, there won't be a schedule. Directors are just uploading their performances and judges need to evaluate by a certain date. Yes, that is correct. Um, when we upload, when we upload the MP4 of our recorded students, how early can we do this upload when, when times are published? 
you should be able to do it as soon as you enter the students. There, there's a virtual MPA page for the directors where you'll ent- you'll upload the, the scanned version of their sheet music for the judge. And I'm gonna put a link right next to that to upload their video. So that should be available right after you actually enter the students. So you can you can go back in at any time. And the idea is for the deadline for those to be uploaded at the deadline of the MPA um, or the, the start date of the MPA. So whatever the first date your MPA is scheduled for, that'll be the deadline that those videos, uh, pre-recorded videos get uploaded. Should the student have his or her instrument put together in case the judge wants to work with a student or w- or should we only be talking to the student? I would definitely have your, have the student have the instrument, yeah. Um, Cause that's, that's common for the judge to ask the student to play something else after they ask him to play something a little differently or something like that. So um, yeah, the student should be prepared even though they pre-recorded it, I would say they should be prepared to to uh, pr- to play again, unless unless Ian or John, uh, you know, have a different perspective on that. Um, all right, Tamara has a suggestion. Uh, she says she used two screens, one to keep the virtual office open and the other to keep my judging schedule and entries open. Made it easier to pop in and out of the office if a student didn't show up. So that's that's a good idea. If you have two two screens or two computers, or even you can put like the virtual office in your iPad or something like that as well. So um, I judge Tom, from Tom Viking. I judged the first one and it went great. Thank you so much for all the hard work putting this together. A couple of challenges I encountered was seeing the music and the student performance at the same time. Also, not having a hard copy of the music made it difficult to make specific notes as the student was playing. Also, when scrolling down to see the music, their timer would go off the screen. I did fix the problem with the timer going off the screen. So the timer is now sticky at the top, even when you scroll down. Um, the You should have a print button. When you hover over the music, there's a printer icon. So if you wanna print that um, and to have a hard copy, you're welcome to do that. You can also download the PDF and open it in a separate window or a separate, um, a separate monitor. If you've got two monitors, feel free to do that. Is it possible to keep the first couple of slots in the day a little longer so that everyone can get acclimated without making everything late? That's a good suggestion to district chairs. Um, I know one suggestion that was made from the district chairs that have already gone through this is to check that option in MPA online to make all of the slots 12 minutes. Because normally MPA online schedules 10 minutes for the easy music and 12 minutes for the more difficult music, but you can check that checkbox to make everything 12 minutes. So that helps out a little bit as well. Um, can the judge play for the mute for, for the student? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's one thing. If you've got a, a higher quality microphone, you'll get a higher quality tone quality through the system. Um, will adjudicators need to be concerned with the original music scores? I'll let Ian or John answer that. What if there's no current scheduling in my adjudicator portal? It just means that you're, uh, district chair hasn't scheduled yet, or your district chair might not have invited you to the to the MPA yet. So, um, cool. It looks like that's about all the questions. So feel free to just type any more questions into the Q and A box, and I'll keep on looking at that for a few more minutes. Um, but other than that, I'll go ahead and turn it back over to uh, John or Ian. Thank you, Josh. That was great, man. That was really cool. And just, you know, there's some questions or some concerns This went really fast, but please remember that um, the uh, all of this is being streamed live on YouTube, which means that when we get done with this, it'll stay something you can go back and do a reference and you can ref- refer to this often. And then Josh, you had um, your little slides, the PowerPoint thing that you were doing. Mm-hmm. Is that possible that we can make that available to everyone as well? Sure. Yeah. Okay, great. And, and again, and, and I think everybody uh, is feeling in our daily lives as well as this, we're inventing the airplane as we fly it. And Jason Duckett loves to say it. Um, and so understand that we're all going to be asking questions through the night and we're all developing things. And by the time it gets there, I think we're all going to have a whole lot more clarity, but this is just a great way for us to uh, get started and get thinking about these things. And, and Josh, you, you see it, everybody putting over here, it's incredible 
what you've done so far and how you're putting this together for us. And we're just so grateful. And uh, especially that you're putting it together in the middle of putting together this conference. How you're doing all this stuff and, and making these things happen is really, really great. And uh, once we get through the conference next week, I'm sure that, you know, we'll be able to get some more detail and do things like that, too, if we need it. Is that true, Josh? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The the concert, all, well, all the video upload stuff isn't built yet. And the concert MPA judging and stuff isn't built yet. But that should be ready, you know, within two or three weeks after the conference is over. Right. And I assume that as you build that stuff, I mean, it seems like you always do. You just kind of create little sheets for us and cheat sheets and things that help us with it. And so... Um, we're hoping that tonight gives everybody an overview of what's coming up and kind of get get us thinking about it. But if you feel a little bit lost at the moment or you still have a lot of questions about it, wait, what buttons am I going to push or how's this going to work? Don't worry. It's it's going to be there. We're going to make sure that it gets clear. Um, but tonight is just to get us started thinking about it and doing things of that nature. Um, anybody else have any other questions for Josh? And I probably missed them. And then we'll try to go back once Josh is done. We'll try to go back and start talking about some of those other questions that would be more for John and I. Did you cover the Q&A section? I, oh, I've been. Yeah, they've been going back and forth between Q&A and chat, which has been confusing. I think that, um, Josh, you've been kind of looking at both. Yeah, I tried to address all of them um, from, from both as I saw them, I might have missed a few. Um, I think David Wing just put one, put a question about live or it looks like he's just worried about accompanists having to pre-record so many sessions, um, whereas going back to back live might work better. So um, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure if we decided that We'd want them all pre-recorded just because that's better quality, or if the live option should remain as an option. But that's probably for the adjudication chair or for the district chairs or board to to determine. Absolutely, and we are still discussing that quite a bit at this point. We have the our first publication did say that students anything up to a quartet could play live or pre-recorded. But the more that we get into these things, the more we find out we're really going to strongly encourage everyone to pre-record. It's just significantly better. And the more that we do it and the more that we work with it, everything about pre-recording is better. Um, even to the point of poor companies trying to run around between different schools or whatever else may need to happen in there, pre-recording is definitely the way to go, if at all possible. Uh, right. And, and talking about it, that uh, the connectivity issues just between uh, a kid and the judge that can that can come up uh, that would, you know, lo lose an entire middle part of the section where if it's recorded and, and uploaded, it's, it's a much better uh, performance experience for everybody. Okay. And as you, Renee, just asked, we are doing we are doing auxiliary, correct, Ian? Yes, sir. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. At both the district and the state level. Um, so we definitely want to make sure that that's available for everybody. Uh, and definitely students are allowed to use smart music or a track that is absolutely correct. Um, I know that some band directors have already started recording tracks of a cons of a solo that multiple students are going to use. And so the kids are just working with that recording right now, um, which I don't know that any of us would choose to do that as our first option. We would definitely want to have a live accompanist and do the things that way. And we probably would rather play without masks and probably want not you on to use bell covers, but just being honest and with ourselves and the reality of the situation, we'll do whatever we can to help make it work. That's right. Jeremy Williamson just put in guilty. Okay. Um, well, and again, we'll keep hitting these questions as fast as we can. Um, and Gary, we are going to talk about the accompaniment part of things as we get into Solon Ensemble. And uh, we're going to talk about other, uh, some of those other things right now. What we're really kind of doing is looking for any questions that um, are tech-specific for Josh. And then as we get into all of those other things, we can talk about that as well. And let's just go ahead and, and say it now. And I kept meaning to say, and I forget, forgot. If you do have questions for any of the presenters as we're going, let's go ahead and put them in the question and answer se section. 
uh, should be a little Q&A down at the bottom, and let's type them in there and try to keep the questions out of the chat, only because it is a little bit tricky to, to monitor both places. Um, so if you can, let's go and put them in there. Uh, and so, Dirk, that's a great question. It's time for that student to have their solo ensemble performance, and they've uploaded the pre-recorded video. The student themselves doesn't appear. Uh, I would say, yeah, let's definitely go ahead and start adjudicating um, at that point to help us stay on schedule. And if the student joins partway through, great. And if the student doesn't make it for some connectivity issue, they still have the sheet uh, that you filled out, and they're still getting some feedback for it. But that's a good point for sure. A lot of these questions are coming up, and it's so exciting to see everybody thinking that way and all the smart people we have. Okay, well, we know that Josh isn't going anywhere. He's going to be in Florida with us for a very long time, so we can ask him later questions later on. John, is there anything else we wanted to do with Josh before we let him go? I feel like I'm talking to an e-learner right now where you ask a kid a question and there's just silence on the other side. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to pretend that um, jo John gave us an answer that he doesn't need to see Josh anymore. Uh, so Josh, at this point, if you want to go ahead uh, and log out or if you just want to hang out and, and watch the proceedings, you're definitely welcome to do that. Oh, there's John. I, I'm sorry. I was, I'm, I'm trying to keep up with all of the all of the typing. And um, these are great questions, and we're hoping that the next couple of a lot of these are very specific to SE and or concert. Um, so uh, you may need to redo them in the Q and A. Um, and, and again, uh, Dr. Bula, thank you for all of your 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 tech stuff. Um, where would any of us be without you right now, or any other time of the year? So thank you. Um, we will probably give just a little bit of a break because the next thing is supposed to start on time at seven and it will start the S and E, um, uh, portion of this with Mr. Sullivan and Mr. Duckett, um, a little bit of a reminder of our ethical responsibilities. And then after that, Mr. Duckett will give us tales of, of his experiences. And then for those of you that may have judged already, um, down in district 21, um, we we are wanting this to open up to a little bit of a care and share. So it'll be uh, about 15, 20 minutes of just reminders of our ethical responsibilities, 20 minutes of Tales from the Crypt with Mr. Duckett, and then uh, 20 minutes of kind of caring and sharing. Is that correct, Mr. Schwinn? That sounds great. And maybe do we, and, and I think what you just said, you might what, maybe take a 10 minute break and then Maybe we'll start sewing ensemble a little bit early so that we can build a break in a little bit later between this and concert. I, I don't have a problem with that because everybody that um, hopefully that was here for the earlier session with Dr. Beulah will just stay on. So uh, let's say at about 650, uh, 55, we'll officially introduce everybody and then we'll get rolling from there. Is that fair? Sounds good to me. Okay, we'll see everybody at 6.55. I have 6.39 right now. Um, uh, lurking, uh, Mr. Jenkins, do you have anything to add? Okay, we're going to go with no. See everybody at 6.55. Hey, Ian. Yes, sir. Uh, I guess if I'm a presenter, am I allowed to generate a question in the Q&A? I couldn't see a way to generate a question in that section. Do I just respond to them? Um, that's a good question. I don't see a way to do it either. Um, so you might be able to use the chat and just direct well, it to the panelists. Yeah, that's what I did. And so, I, but I, I know you were asking us to put things into the Q and A. I just couldn't see how to start a question. So, okay, that's all right. I, I can tell you that I have typed a few answers for ones that I know the answer to that seem to be pretty specific and kind of simple questions. So the open versus the answered questions are, are two different things, but I can tell you, I don't know if I can just do that because I'm a panelist, but I've answered a few questions on this Q&A part already. Yeah, just one question I had like that I put in the, the, the chat side uh, was, uh, you know, if a director, band director wanted to sit in while a, a, a judge and a student are looking at a pre-recorded videos, is there a third computer? Can that director be anywhere in the world or does the director have to be in the same brick and mortar room as the student? Anywhere. They can be anywhere. Okay. Cool. That's good. 
my guess is, and Josh, tell me if I'm wrong, but the director, the director of the school would have the same looking list that the adjudicator has, which means right. they can yeah. in and out and they can jump from, from room to room and they don't have to, but they can jump from room to room to watch. Great. Performances. Josh, right. is that accurate? Yeah, that's right. Yeah.
Mr. Duckett. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, one of the couple of texts that I've been getting is just that um, you know probably better, well, not probably, you definitely know better than me some of the format of this. So a lot of this is going to be format based for you. Um, also, uh, there's a couple of people that have auxiliary questions, and a lot of that's going to have to be dependent on the districts and how they are handling that, if I'm not mistaken, correct? That's correct. Okay. So just uh, just kind of giving you a heads up that that was a, a, a very valid text message that I got about uh, how is this, it, it transfers the s &E whole system that we have, well, that you guys have concocted up, yeah. uh, transfers to auxiliary fine. It's just, it depends on how the districts are handling it. That's right. Although there's some, there are some truths that uh, auxiliary is a, would be assumedly a larger event. Um, and so I'll, I'll put on the, Crypt, Tales from the Crypt hat, but then also from the executive committee hat. Um, the general thought is that that any event that's larger than a quintet has to be pre-recorded. Right. Which means that, and I think that with the space concerns, uh, although I'm not sure for auxiliary what that answer is or if it's different because you simply can turn on a video and the audio portion is not, a, is not an essential part of that. So that may be a, a better one for Ian to kind of grab onto, but from a but, solo standpoint, um, solos do not have to be pre-recorded. They can be done either way, right? Up to a quintet. The, just the audio with the auxiliary is going to. I mean, the, the visual and the audio has to go ahead, and you know, the the, the it, it has to line up, and then that way also there's a point of reference if, for a tape, so they can hear the adjudicator or the person that gets the adjudicator's recording, they can hear it that it's this piece of the music as it also aligns up with the, the, the visual routine. Well, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, they, I would think that, that in for all of us, regardless of what the event is, that there's a little bit more of an understanding of, I mean, hell, how many times have we had a Zoom meeting that's gone without some sort of little glitchy flaw? So I, I think the understanding of, if they're all tossing at the same speed and it comes out a half second behind the music, well, I mean, that's more dazzling to me than. Well, I think it depends on what guard you sit in front of. Um, it, I, I think it's just more of a, 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 about product and process as an adjudicator for auxiliary was kind of the question. Um, so uh, just kind of a heads up on that. And it is 656. Um, so welcome back, everybody. Um, this uh, is not a renewal session. Um, this is uh, basically uh, a, a lot of really, really, really fine uh, adjudicators, lots to see of uh, so many familiar names over here, um, getting together to be able to go ahead and come up with basically uh, a reminder of our ethical responsibilities and also to talk about um, what it is that we are trying to do for not only the members of the FBA, but mainly for the people that we are teaching, for the, the students that we are teaching, to give them that uh, venue and that opportunity to get uh, another set of eyes and ears on what they're doing um, and to give them uh, an assessment during uh, some really, really trying times. So this portion is going to be um, solo and ensemble. Um, Brian Sullivan, who does all of our sessions in the summer and in the spring, he does a wonderful job with all of the new uh, SE folks uh, that go through the training. He is going to go ahead and start off and give us about 15 minutes, 20 minutes of uh, reminders of just what we all need to really kind of look into and remind ourselves about when it comes to um, just our ethics, which would be if we were alive or if we were remote. So, um, Brian, we're going to let you take it away. And then after that, Mr. Duckett was down, if not mistaken, down in District 21 um, when they had their s &E earlier on before we were able to have this session that is going to offer some of his experiences. And I know we have a lot of folks that are in this Zoom that will be able to offer um, their experiences of not only um, having judged at it, but also having had their 
students participate. So if you will please uh, give your attention to Mr. Sullivan and uh, thank you guys for doing this. And I will be here with uh, muting and looking at whatever questions I might be able to answer. All right, go right on ahead, Mr. Sullivan. Uh, okay, hey, good evening, everyone. Uh, boy, I gotta tell you, I found that the last hour session so interesting. Uh, very enlightening, you know, it answered a lot of questions. And of course, it, it generated a lot of questions, but certainly I feel a lot, uh, a lot more secure now. And hopefully, uh, you'll you all will have a similar feeling after the after tonight's sessions. Uh, like, like John said, you know, typically, I run things for uh, directors who are brand new at adjudicating. So I see this panel here that how many people signed in, boy, it's pretty daunting <laughs> to be uh, presenting to you all tonight. I mean, I love talking shop to anyone. So I will certainly do my best. Uh, so what I'm going to do now, if you do not mind, let me see if I can share screen this and this, and then slideshow to this on the beginning. So hopefully uh, you are seeing that kind of the title page of a PowerPoint presentation. Okay. And if not, someone's going to uh, vigorously get my attention. Uh, so uh, basically my, my little message here. Uh, this PowerPoint presentation I created for this past summer's, uh, the first time I had to do the training uh, remotely, of course. And so I'm, I'm going to kind of hold on to that. Uh, this was designed for, you know, normal, normal times. <laughs> These ain't normal times here. But I'm hoping that we're going to be able to find still some kind of universal core values, some universal truths here. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to fly through most of these uh screens, because a lot of the details, the nuts and bolts that I really focus on are kind of irrelevant because we're not in a typical high school on a Friday night, Saturday morning, afternoon thing. But I think we're going to land on some uh, hopefully uh, important ideas to be reminded of or just even some new things to, to think about. Uh, please, no one be shy about jumping in. This, this is just a framework for discussion here. Okay. So uh, again, things, uh, and if, if any of these screens catch your eye, if you can contact me later, like uh, you know, what is that all about? So, um, you know, one thing I guess we're not gonna figure out is the exact correct response to every situation, certainly not what rating to give. Uh, so for the new uh, judges, you see, I do some things about history, things that now here's, here's one that I would like us to think about right now. Uh, this is just a good reminder. I'm gonna ask you to, you know, that kind of awful game of if you could only, if you had to pick one answer, if you could only pick one thing, which would it be? You know, when we're, when we're evaluating performance, are we evaluating the performers, uh, their teacher, their director, the performance or the composition? And, uh, you know, with my class of, of newbies, you know, we would take a while to entertain, you know, uh, people would basically argue for their choice. Uh, but eventually I think, we would come to the agreement that, well, I think the performance is what we're going for. That's, that's actually the company line. That's, that's what I'm supposed to teach all the new people. Uh, and then I'm also going to follow that by saying good luck with that. I mean, good luck with sticking to that. Obviously, that's, that's our goal is to evaluate the performance. But I tell you what, that's, um, you, there are going to be times, as, as you all, you guys are already experienced adjudicators. You've been in that room where you know that the, the performer is just a great kid, they good fundamentals, good playing, they've had good teaching, but for some reason, the performance did not go so well. Uh, maybe, maybe the piece was too difficult or some other factors, but it's like, it breaks your heart to think, well, uh, you know, Sullivan says we're supposed to rate the performance, evaluate the performance, uh, which might be a little bit different than evaluating the, the performer. So that's you know something to keep in mind as you're you know watching the video recorded things and uh, you know talking to the performers before and afterwards. So just a few things to, to think about there, okay. And again, for the newbies, I would um, we 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 select a few uh, nuggets uh, from the um, handbook about philosophy. So we'll skip that. You guys know all about this stuff. You guys know all about this stuff. What our primary tests are. So flying through all of this, okay. That. You know, just things to, okay. and again, this is going to be irrelevant, a lot of these things here, because we're not going to have a typical in-person judges meeting, but I'm certainly interested in finding out more of that electronic judges meeting that Josh 
showed us about. The room setup, again, no longer our responsibility, right? So we're gonna skip this. You know, These are things I'm, I'm just holding on. I just didn't wanna lose any of these screens if I have to use this PowerPoint again, okay? But a boom, but a bing. Okay, now here's something I would like to talk about. Uh, before the performance begins, or in, if, in the case of uh, this year, before we watch the video along with the student and maybe even their director, what should you check? What are some things you need to check? And what would you like to know? Okay, what would you like to know? Again, let's, let's start assuming it's a video recorded thing. So everything's already in the can. What would you like to know though before you listen to it, before you, before you view it? Well, you know, you'll probably know what grade that player is in, but do you know how many years they've been playing? Would you like to know that before you hear the music? After a little bit of discussion, I usually steer my, my group to thinking, yeah, I think it'd be good. To, I think you'd have a more informed position if before you know, before the performance begins, you, you know how many years that student has been playing that particular instrument. Okay, that way, as soon as the uh, performance is done, you can spring right into the uh, clinic part, knowing that, wow, the student's only been playing, you know, a ninth grader, but only been playing one year. Or uh, the seventh grader has been playing for four years for some reason. So that I think that would certainly influence, uh, you know, your expectation and certainly the prescription, uh, your prescriptive comments that you give afterwards. Okay, so that's something that, uh, might be interesting uh, before, uh, uh, like I said, I'm assuming now we're going to be having some little uh, intercourse with the with the students before you they start the video. You know, introduction. This is the piece I'm going to listen to. I've got the right score called up. You know, kind of those nuts and bolts things. Okay, and now let's watch. Right? So I just think that that would be a very wise thing to maintain, even in our distant, uh, socially distant kind of thing here. During the performance, we're not being watched as we are a live person. And then, of course, after the performance, I really put a lot of emphasis on this. As you can tell, I got all my capital letters here. Uh, but this is really where you earn your money. You know, I'm very proud that the FBA does uh, encourage and expect adjudicators to work with the students at the conclusion of their performance. Uh, I understand it is still the policy in many states that... Uh, there's virtually no, no chatter. <laughs> it's almost kind of like the way we uh, record all state auditions. We're allowed to say, you know, thank you very much. And that's about it. But uh, so what you do in those moments afterwards, I think are just really so, so important. And, you know, if this were our, our regular, you know, four hour session with newbies, we'd spend a whole big session on this. Uh, the three C's, we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, thanks to Ivan Wansley on that. But uh, I just really think that, you know, it's, it, never, it never hurts to be reminded of the importance of that post-performance little bit of time here. Now, the scheduling, uh, man, that was, a, that was a really cool wake-up call from Josh about the countdown and, you know, when your time is done, it's done. So uh, these are some things that we're going to skip uh, out because uh, it's not really relevant. Uh, I'm assuming that a lot of the rules and fractions and the disqualifications and comments only things. Those are being decided by people above my pay grade and above most judges pay grades. So uh, a lot of those things will be uh, either suspended or changed for, for this year. Okay. Now the sheet, I guess I, I'm glad to know that we're still using the printed sheet, the paper sheet. And I think Monica had a question, do we print our own or will uh, we be uh, mailed an envelope with a bunch of sheets and uh, I think, I'm not sure if that was really answered tonight. Uh, I bet it will be before the night's over. Okay, but so things, just little reminders. And again, I, I'm preaching to very experienced adjudicators, but I, thought, I don't think it hurts to really be reminded that, you know, is, is your handwriting legible, you know, spelling, grammar, things like that. Uh, just understand that your sheet these days can be seen by a whole lot of people in a lot of different ways. You know, your sheet can be plastered all over, not only a bulletin board in a band room, but now, of course, on social media. Uh, one of my pet peeves I always make a big deal about on sheets is to please don't fall back on the, you know, 
remember what we talked about. <laughs> That's just something that drives me nuts. When I get a sheet like that, uh, as a, if one of my students, if I see their sheet, they're like, uh, well, what, what did they talk about? <laughs> they never remember. They never remember. Okay. Uh, of course, making sure the mechanics of the sheet are really good, that the letter grades uh, match the final rating and be real careful about erasures. And I think Jeremy was talking about, uh, he would like to try to do uh, the sheets. Can we do PDF sheets electronically? And of course that removes the whole notion of any uh, you know funny business with erasures, especially if the rating ends up being a little bit lower than what the initial rating appeared to be, okay? Uh, of course, the sheets here. You guys, <laughs> you guys, you know, can you guys can picture this? These sheets all in your sleep. So I don't think there's really much we need to do in terms of the mechanics of that. Now, as far as I, I guess I was in particular asked to talk about ethics or you know some professional philosophy. So I guess here we finally got to a screen about ethical concerns. And uh, you know what I'm thinking is to, one thing is to guard a little bit against bias that we might have, whether it's a particular piece or even, boy, I'm hearing the same solo from the same school 12 times in a row. Uh, you know, that's the director's call probably. And so we have to be uh, careful to guard against bias about that. Um, you know, the performer's appearance, understanding that these days, you know, they might have be very limited in what they can afford to do as far as technology, as far as their accompaniment, as far as even what they wear, you know. Uh, certainly, if you think uh, how they present themselves is inappropriate, there is a place in the comments. What does it say? Including stage presence, right? Uh, there's certainly a time and a place to address that. But I would just be careful about letting those kinds of things, especially this year, uh, carry undue amount of weight in uh, in your in your evaluation and especially assigning ratings. Okay. Of course, we are the personification of the FBI. You know, dress and demeanor, uh, at least from the neck up. <laughs> make sure you make sure you're looking good, uh, and uh, uh, just you know, keep keep it professional. A again, I, I feel almost silly talking to this audience about that. Uh, of course, this is something we don't have to worry about right now. Being alone with the student, okay? Uh, now, you we might be somehow facing disgruntled uh, people, students, parents, directors, but I bet that we'll be facing them electronically. So. Uh, Again, things that maybe are a little bit irrelevant now, but just maybe a little reminder, say, hey, it'll be nice not to be, you know, confronted in the hallway uh, this year uh, with a problem. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you to Ivan Wansley. Man, I don't even know if he remembers that I took his marching band adjudication certification session many, many years ago. And the thing that stuck in my brain that, that just kind of burned itself into my brain uh, from that session were the three C's. The three C's. This is such a great framework for any kind of communication in any kind of situation uh, that is significant and that may involve conflict or difference of opinion or things like that. And so whether you're speaking to the performer as soon as their video is over or when you're writing the sheet, what, you know, the first th things that should be seen to me would be compliments. A four real compliment, not a back on and back handed compliment, but a four real compliment. You kind of open the pathways, you know, get something sweet to get started there. That opens communication. They're going to read. They're going to read on further. Uh, they're going to pay a lot more attention. So always start with a compliment. Uh, having said that, <laughs> this is something I encourage my my newbies to be careful of. Sometimes in our zeal to heap praise on a, on a very successful performance, we start using comparative words. Like that was the best performance I've heard all weekend. Or, you know, finally, it's nice to hear a, a, a representative trombone sound or something like that. Because as soon as you do that, now we're kind of ranking the kids. We're kind of comparing them, setting up against each other. And, you know, who knows who might be in the same of course this year, you know, they probably won't be listening in on the, on the, on the session, but who knows if they watch a, a recording of your of your comments, uh, you know, you might have judged another student from that same school, and you're heaping praise on a on a classmate of theirs, and now that other kid, find, well, feels like, well, what am I, chopped liver? So, you know, certainly 
give all due compliments. Just by, I would just be on, uh, on alert to uh, be careful with uh, comparative. Now, uh, we don't want to leave it at that. Of course, now this is something that we're really good at critiquing. Uh, what are things keeping it from sounding like the next level? And no matter how good it is, there's always room for critique. Uh, of course, some uh, events that are struggling, there's so much to critique. And so we need to, again, keep the time in mind and pick out maybe the one, maybe two things that you really want them to, to leave with, okay? Um, course of action, okay? You don't leave it at critique, right? Hey, you're out of tune. Your intonation's really bad. Have a nice day, right? It has to be followed up with course of action. So, you know, the, these three C's, I just think, you know, I try every day in my band classes to deal with that. Uh, if I have an issue with my principal, something at school, uh, when I walk into his office, I try to start with something positive, compliment about how he's doing. And then I explain the problem. And then I try to have a solution. If I have a troublesome phone call with a parent, if I, if I call about their kid who's uh, been difficult, uh, I got to start with some kind of compliment, you know, and then I'll explain the issue. And then I'll propose uh, a prescription. I'll propose a course of action. Uh, so uh, this is something I am forever indebted to Ivan for turning me on to that. And so I'm just uh, paying it forward in case any of you are not into the three C's. Uh, please do those all the time. Okay. And then some alternates to the three C's, you know, um, you know, sometimes a group uh, is so good that that second C, if there's not much to critique, uh, you challenge them. Okay, man, you nailed this piece. Uh, it seemed to give you no trouble. What are you doing next? And you might offer them a maybe more challenging piece, things like that. Okay. I'm going to keep on going. Okay. And then we do the ratings, of course. And then this is something you guys all have your own handle on the ratings with, with the newbies. We talk a lot about this and I offer my little uh, reduction as far as uh, in terms of uh, the success of each element or the six success of each piece, I basically have boiled down a superior to something that is almost always or almost all you know, just, it's all the success. I don't use the word perfect, but uh, almost all elements are done very, very well. You know, a, a certain element is almost always nicely attended to. Okay, to me, that's a superior. And then I'm just going to fly through the rest of these. You get the idea. Excellent. I use many or often in terms of success. Good. We use some or sometimes. Fair, few or seldom. I used to say infrequently, but I think seldom is a lot easier to remember. Again, and then uh, poor. And again, it's notice we, we use the qualifier uh, almost. <laughs> almost none. Almost never in terms of success. So that's something that you know you may or may not find interesting. Okay, uh, I am almost done here. So uh, some typical scenarios that we might have to deal with again, just to think about, just like you would in a real brick and mortar classroom. Uh, you know that great kid, obviously a strong player, but could not handle this solo today. And this is where I, my challenge to you guys is way back at the beginning. If we're evaluating the performance rather than the performer. This is going to be hard to do. Okay, you're going to recognize that, man, this is probably an all state, at least an all county kid. They're doing great, but this particular piece, they could not handle it. Uh, a kid that would, you know, with a better selected piece, certainly walk out with a superior. Now they're looking at an excellent or, or maybe lower. So just, you know, make sure that you're willing to deal with that, uh, talking to the student and maybe even their director uh, after the event. Okay. And then, of course, uh, what if the technical issues with the accompaniment, what's, you know, that could be awkward. Mainly I'm talking about wacky pianists in, a, in, in your room, but who knows what's, what we're going to hear this year, okay? Uh, what do we got here? And, of course, how do you deal with uh, an ensemble that has, you know, maybe three of the four players are prepared, a uh, strong player, uh, strong player, but way too many cuts, Okay, and this, whether it's the time or things like that, that's one of the things that it's a really thorny issue to deal with. But when that, you know, grade seven student comes up and lays the score on the desk and say, and we're going to cut from here to here, and they flip like four pages of material. Well, is it really still that same grade seven solo, even if it technically fits the minimum or maximum time limits? So just be, uh, be ready to deal with that. Some of you might have your own uh, 
suggestions on how to deal with that. Uh, what about, and I'm so glad, man, whoever brought up the idea, should the student have their instrument with them while you're viewing their pre-recorded performance? That is so cool. I hadn't really thought about that before tonight. So uh, the, the, you, you, you view a performance and you think, man, that's really good. That's like a B plus. That's a strong, excellent performance. And say, and but maybe they just have, they have one little issue that man could have been fixed so easily had a, a music teacher work with them for five minutes. You know, that, oh man, I, we can fix that. Hey, listen, you got your trumpet there. Hey, do this, uh, and you teach them that the accidentals carry through the measure. Let's say, and they missed all of those. Well, you teach them that, and now play. So, can you play again? You have your trumpet right with you. Can you play that? And they fix it. Oh, great. Well, cool. Uh, what's the rating? And again, I understand that uh, in some districts, maybe there might not be ratings. So if I'm talking about ratings too much, I apologize. But, uh, you know, in general, you know, what do you do? Are you, are you rating the initial run through <laughs> or are you rating their new improved uh, run through after you work with them? Okay. Things that we have to deal with. Okay. If, uh, if there's issues during the event, do you ever reach in and stop? Of course, with pre-recorded things, that won't be an issue. Okay. Uh, players break down in tears. Hopefully with pre-recorded things, a lot of that stuff won't happen. Okay. Uh, what about this? So I understand now we will have to deal with this kind of thing this year. Uh, that strong, you know, state level uh, repertoire, that's borderline. You know, do you try to uh, bargain with the kids? Hey, if you do this, if you promise to do that, I think I can send you on to state. You know, is that wise to do? Uh, so these are things that, again, you might be in a situation with this year. Uh, an event is so rough, you don't know where to begin. So where do you begin? Again, we got to stay on time. So pick the one thing. First of all, make sure you follow the three C's. Compliment. And, you know, the, uh, the rougher the event, the more important, the compliment part is uh, when you speak to the players and also when you start commenting on the sheet. They have to have something to grab onto that is positive. If they see an entire sheet with minuses and C's and D's and critiques, well, that might be their last SME event. <laughs> yeah, that might be their last year in band. So that's so important to you know use your humanity, use your uh, uh, teaching chops to come up with that. So always begin with a compliment and then pick one thing. And I've been in this situation, it's kind of fun, but uh, it's kind of daunting. An event is so fantastic, you feel at a loss. Like, man, that kid played that concerto better than I ever could. You know, there's no way I could play it. You know, what do you do? Well, there's still a lot you can offer. You're the, you're the noted expert. You're the one with experience. You're the one that knows the big picture. You're the one that can, you know, probe, well, how did you come up with this performance? Who do you listen to? And then you give them ideas for what's coming next for you. Uh, are you going to college? Are you going to major music? Are you going to be in the college band? Are you aware of scholarship opportunities? Are you aware of youth orchestras? Are you aware of, of concerto competitions? Things like that. Okay. And then this is my last screen. Uh, how did we do here tonight? Uh, what are, what are these things? What, what concepts and principles must we uphold no matter what? Are any of these things, things we're going to discard? Some of those decisions have been made already. Okay. Uh, what new procedures should we implement? A lot of that has been decided for us. And I, I want to turn it over to Jason now. I think has it been about 20 minutes. I hope it's been no more than 20 minutes. Oh, 722. Sorry about that. So I owe somebody two minutes. Uh, so I'm going to turn it over right now, uh, if that's okay. All right. Super. Thank you, Brian. And I'll just go two minutes short, and then we'll be all okay. even. There we go. Um, I wanted to, well, John asked me to speak about the solo and ensemble experience as an adjudicator that actually did this. And I was uh, fortunate to have the opportunity to evaluate uh, District 16 uh, middle school kids back in December. So if you've judged in District 16, you know you get a, a, a wide array of, uh, of situations. And this was no different. And so we were able, I was able to listen to, to kids for, for two days from all sorts of different situations. The, um, and, I, and, I, and I know some others that are on the 
conference right now, we're a part of that. And so I, I would encourage any of you, if I've missed something big, when we get to the Q&A session, don't hesitate to, to jump in and, and, and offer some help. Um, I was nervous too, because I watched a lot of the questions going on about how this works and, and am I going to be able to do it? And will I be able to follow the, the you know, the, the, the protocols? It was really, it, you know, Josh Buell, as we all know, is, is, a, is a saint. The, the setup was super easy to follow. And, the, and I'm not a super techie guy, but it was very easy to not only connect with each of these students, but to be able to jump back and forth uh, to the district officers should I, if I needed to for any situation. And there were a couple of times that I did. So we had our pre-meeting, uh, Kenan headed that and the, and the rest of the district uh, officials of District 16 headed that up. And they were in essence, kind of on site all the time, online all the time, so that if there was an issue, they could fix it. Um, and the issues were technologically, inspired issues we can't this we had we couldn't connect with this kid for whatever reason um internet slow or that sort of thing we have issues when we do them live so it wasn't anything that was tricky or anything that that made the thing bog down too much so i think that and i'm and i know there's some district chairs that are on here too being prepared from a district chair standpoint is, it, it, I think for district chairs, it may be the bigger learning curve of, of, of the two. Because for us, it was, for, for adjudicators, it was really pretty easy. Um, Brian spoke about, you know, evaluating what you hear. It would be very obvious that what you're going to hear in some cases is going to be, uh, is going to be tempered a bit because of technological glitches what you hear is going to be tempered a little bit because kids aren't playing from the, a classroom where it's live, but from a living room or a bedroom, or I had two or three kids perform outside because they, that was just the easiest place or the quietest place for them to do their thing. I, I would offer that some of the other considerations that, that we have when we evaluate and, and Brian spoke and very accurately about the way that the, the kid is presenting himself, the way he's dressed, or that that in this era, a lot of these kids haven't left their house for months. And so the thought process for them to put on a, a, a dress or a tie just doesn't really hit them. And so I think that as you're being as as patient as you can with the with the situation, and more importantly, as you're being as compassionate as you can in the situation while still doing your best to maintain the standards of an, of, of an evaluator here in our, in our organization, that those things, as Brian said, and I would reiterate, probably do not need to take as much of a front seat as, as the performance itself. And we certainly want to be mindful of the fact that there are potentially going to be some technological glitches that take place. All of my events that I heard were live. I didn't have any pre-recorded events. And I can tell you personally, it's my intent to have my students perform live when they do their sewing ensemble stuff. I, I want to make sure that, that we, we're aware and then hopefully the membership is aware that a pre-recorded thing is acceptable, but a live performance is acceptable too. Both of those are, are, are working and, and the, the parameters indicate up to a certain number of performers because if it goes beyond that, the bandwidth can't quite handle it. And so with, with bands and with jazz bands, that's going to be a different game. But for solos, which is what I'm talking about today, and very small ensembles, that live performance is a, is a very possible thing to have happen. Um, and I don't, want to, I don't want to overstep my bounds in answering what some of the, you know, the questions someone asked about, does this, if, this, if it's pre-recorded, does the student have to be live there for the evaluation? Well, I'd, li I'd like to hope so. Because otherwise, why do we have a schedule? I mean, we're, that would be kind of like the concert band almost. But um, it, that was not an issue that I had in my, in my situation. Um, when we had those glitches that were invariably with uh, technological issues, it was easy to sometimes it was I couldn't hear them and sometimes it was they couldn't hear me and I can tell you that probably the smartest thing I had after about half an hour was was a piece of paper 
and a and a marker so that I could if I could do this instead, well that's backwards. If I could do that instead, it was it was much easier for me to because everybody knows that I can't hear you. We get that all the time. But to try and talk to them about the next step, there's a place to type it in. But if their connection is that bad, it, it, it's not always working. And so a, a, a marker will be a real helpful thing to just make sure that they are um, seeing what you need to communicate. And, and a, a, in the two days that I had, I, I think I had three students that I needed to reschedule. Well, that's no different than if I'm sitting live in, a, in, in some school. Uh, and I was able on my own, and you'll have that ability on your own to reschedule a student. For an available open time that you have, um, a time slot that you'll have open, or the district chair can redo that too. In that 12-minute window that I had, and, and by the way, I should I, I should reiterate, district chairs. It would be I, I would echo to the NZ Earth that having a 12-minute time slot at least is going to be an essential way to make sure that the event runs on time. I, you know, I'm listening to Pied Piper, but we, it was still very, there were a couple of times where I wasn't, I was struggling to stay on schedule and I wasn't even filling out an adjudicator sheet. All of these events were comments only. And so I would encourage you adjudicators to do your, you have to stay on time. You simply have to stay on time, which means that that 12 minute and that clock is ticking. And I, I'm hoping that as students are performing longer events, that we are, we have to, it's not, there's not an option. We have to show more brevity in our commentary with the kid. Uh, ideally, you're writing down the things instead of pontificating about everything you know, because you simply don't have the time to do it. You simply don't have the time to do it. And if it, it may mean, and I don't wanna try and write your policy, but it may mean there, there may be 15 minute blocks that you need to have just to make sure that it goes because you got to sign out and sign into the next event, sign out sex in the next event. Um, so you have to be kind of short with your, with your commentary for sure. I'm a, I was a huge, I'm always a huge fan when the kid comes in the room of trying to do things to make them feel at ease. This event had sixth graders and seventh graders and they tend to be less stressed about stuff. But in the same way that when they come in and I can ask them what school they go to and if I know the director, oh, I know that person. I, oh, you're really fortunate to be in that situation and, and you, it's so good to have you here and I'm so glad your parent came here today. Um, I found that I could have that same sort of ice breaking time with them by looking at their surroundings. I met kids' pet, uh, dogs, um, I got to hear about some kid's guitar in the background and some little award that they got. Um, so it's a sort of thing that helps to make them at ease. And, and, and in a very weird situation, we can, we can kind of embrace the moment that we have with them so that it provides more of a personal connection and still get to hear them play. Um, there's <laughs> There was one kid that speaking of rescheduling that, and, and these are great kids. I had a kid who was forced to be outside because his mom was making dinner for some homeless shelter. And then I had another kid and it was super noisy in the background. And she said, I, I'm sorry, I can't hear you very well. I'm at a wedding reception right now. How about if we reschedule? We can do that. Yes, we can do that. And so you get to be a real hero. Um, and I hope that I don't want to take over Brian's fire, but if you, as a solo ensemble judge, we have the opportunity to be a hero to kids far more than a concert band does, a adjudicator does, because we get to get one-on-one -on -one time. And if and if if you do nothing else, if you leave those kids feeling inspired to do a solo again next year, regardless of what rating you give them, that that they're going to do that. And that, and we're building better bands, and that's that's our job, isn't it? I think it is. Um, I'm looking at my notes. I didn't have any, like I said, I didn't have any taped events. They were all live. And so I would wager that when those taped events are going, that it's going to take a, another second or two to make sure that the recording is going on. Um, I, the, 
Josh said, and I'll reiterate that the 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 score, the kids part was was on the screen. I didn't feel compelled to have to print anything out. But again, I'm looking at music that I've seen before a whole lot of times. And so I could scroll and do some things. I couldn't really write on it. Um, and if that's your thing, then you may want to set yourself up so you can print something out. But again, you're, I would say that your time is so is, is so short that you, you need to be very careful that you aren't going on and on about issues. Find the two or three things that are there, the two or three things you put in your, in your notes anyway. Reiterate those, and, and then you got to move on to the next thing because it'll it will cut you out, and and you'll be kind of you'll get cut off mid sentence there. I think that I think the two other things I would I would reinforce is that number one, even if those events are pre-recorded, you're going to have some sound quality issues. We have to be professional enough, and and again, compassionate enough to know the difference between a recording that's a little tiny bit subpar for whatever reason and the quality of sound that the kid is making. And I, I would never want to say that we need to dumb down what we're doing for our evaluation. But I think this year more than any other, we have to be a little bit more considerate to what some of those little glitches are. We're, we are trying our best to make sure that we're empowering kids to do this again. And in the, the God's honest truth is there's a lot of kids who haven't been in a classroom the whole year. These were sixth graders in some of these cases that had never, I don't think they ever shook the director's hand yet. And they're playing some music. So it was, it was really inspirational to hear what they're doing. And um, we'll, have a, we'll have a much more wide breadth of, of, of performances when we're, what we have for the high school, so an ensemble in a few weeks, but what we have maybe later in the year. Uh, I know I'm kind of rambling with that, but, but please be, Please be smart about how you're you're really evaluating this and, and, and considering the things that are out of their hands. Let's let, let's not let that be, I think, the, the driving force. Um, what we're doing right now is too important. And I guess the other the other part that I would I would reiterate is that is that this is a lot closer to what so an ensemble looks like regularly than I think you guys will 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 maybe realize. Because once the event started. Even though I'm, I'm, the computer screen was right here instead of in some classroom, it still is ultimately an interaction between you and that kid. The director, probably not too many times did I have a director with me, but it didn't bother me all that much. And at times the parents were there, but now it wasn't a parent screen. It was a parent sitting in, on the couch and enjoying the performance. I had very rarely was there a piano accompaniment going along with it. There were some pre-recorded piano recordings. Um, I would say there was only one or two times where it really affected what the kid was doing, but it would have been the same thing if they were sitting in the classroom. If they they weren't, they, you know, they're not counting effectively, and the piano is just going on, and it's an arbitrary sound that's going on while the kid is playing. That kid wasn't going to make spear, you know, anyway, or we didn't give any ratings. But the commentary then is isn't goes in a different direction. Um, it's 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 a lot closer to what you to what we've been doing than you think. It was really a lot of fun to do it, and I didn't have to drive six hours to get home. That was another beautiful thing. I was already home. I didn't have and the and and Kenan had put a couple breaks in like they do always. There was a couple of minutes that I had to stretch around like you do always. Um, I did not have long lines of DNAs like I always seem to have. And in reality, that last kid was at the time that they were supposed to have, but the director instead. So I'm not sure at what point it did go to the student. I hope it did go to the student because it was, you know, I typed three or four sentences. It's Pied Piper, so you're done in a minute and a half or two minutes. So you can only type a couple of sentences. And then you just, I spent those next three or four minutes talking about the sentences I just wrote. And that's what, that's, I thought the kids were seeing that in real time, but I, I don't think they are. Okay. If, the way that that could happen, that may be a, that may be a good thing because it, it appears that the sheets now are going to be on my, on my desk, sent, sent back. And by the way, we probably need to, I don't want to do committee work here, but 
that's an expense for an adjudicator to probably put that in priority mail so it gets back to a district chairman. Uh, we probably need to add that into the adjudicator's expenses all of a sudden. But right. but your question was about judges sheets. I, I, I didn't have them, and so what I'm guessing is that's going to be a, that's going to be a, a little bit of a burden on the district chairs, and we may need to discuss that as a board about what it, what some smart strategies to have it going. Because I was kind of expecting that Josh was going to say it was going to be a little type and print sheet like he has when he does his evaluations. Right, and talking with Josh, it sounds like we're not going to be able to do that quite yet. Yeah. Uh, so that's a great thing, and and I know a lot of us have questions about that. How's that going to work? And We'll be completely honest with you, as Jason just alluded to, we're not real sure yet. And we're still trying to figure that stuff out, too. But we will make sure that you know way ahead of time. And we will definitely, as we try to do with everything, create as many different possibilities that it might be that you would receive a PDF of all of your sheets in the mail. We ask you to print them. And if you're not able to do that, it might be that you could request the district chair to send them to you or something. But again, these are all just possibilities right now, but we're not going to leave anybody out hung to dry. And it might be that you have to send them back, but it might be that we find a way that we can scan them back too. just pull out your phone and just take pictures of them and send them right back to the district right. chair. Right. So we have options that Josh is going to help us figure out what the best way to do that is. I'm sorry, Jason. Go ahead. No, but I, just before it got out of my brain that whatever, what, if these sheets are, are by hand and we're printing out just blanks and making copies of, as adjudicators, we need to be a, a, a little bit more sure that we're putting down that entry ID number. And we're putting down that kid's name in the in the off chance that we're not able to print out every kid's thing and send it um, just so that the district chairs are not completely overwhelmed with a sheet that's not properly filled out on the top half. Right. It sounds like, though, we'll be able to do that. That part shouldn't be too difficult because that is just normal. And instead of printing it to a printer, the district chair could print it to a PDF and email it to us. Well, if they have access to a printer. I mean, the, the, those things that we go, because not everybody's at their school. Right. Uh, and we hope that, that a district chairman at least has somebody in their district that can get it done. Or we'll be spending a lot of money at Kinko's if that's still a place. Right. And so that's stuff that we'll work out and definitely work through that as a board. Right. Um, and again, we appreciate you being here tonight and, and understanding with us that we're working with, just like everybody is to, to figure this stuff out as we go. And, and we appreciate all your questions so yeah, far. And, and we've seen some. It, some ones that despite the fact that we've been working on all the details for this for for months that there's thing to go what about this you know my god we never we never considered that at all so and maria dix uh just commented in district 15 the sewn ensemble sheets were scanned and emailed to the district chair once they got once the judges got done they, they did it that way got it okay um so right so all those things we're definitely going to make sure that whatever ways we have you're going to have those options in front of you and all of these directions are going to be written out so that you're not trying to remember, wait, what did they say on January 8th? What was that again we're supposed to do? It'll all be written out. There'll be places for you to go back and check again and again and again to make sure you're comfortable with all those things. Um, I, I'm going to go back to, and I'm, uh, John, is it okay if I hijack for a second? Absolutely. Okay. I want to go back to the auxiliary for a moment. Um, Definitely what's what we've been discussing and Chris Bond and I'll discuss a little bit more, but definitely like the idea of all auxiliary events being pre-recorded. None of them will be live and that will treat them just like we do with uh, the concert MPA and jazz MPA because that's the way we do it now in districts. The adjudicators at, at um, auxiliary MPA never interact with the students anyway. So we would do it the same way that the students then would get recorded comments back that were happening as they performed just as a concert or a jazz MPA uh, would be happening. And again, you know, I'm going to make sure we're going to talk to the auxiliary folks. And I think I've saw several people suggest that in the questions earlier about auxiliary MPA suggesting that's the way that we should go. And I definitely agree with all of you. Um, but Chris and, and I and then and Chris's committee the auxiliary committee will get together and make sure that we're thinking about that the right way. But the original sheet did specify that all auxiliary events would be pre-recorded. And so I don't see us needing to change that, but we'll let you know if any of those things do need to change. Um, let me, I'm just scrolling through the questions. Um, so it looks like a lot of people, I, I got Kathy Kirsten and 
um, Jim Sammons and some of those folks are putting in those same kind of things. Um, so we're, we're, and we'll definitely work through that um, to be able to do that. Susan, you ask about making the comment sheet in Adobe typable, fillable form that is easy to type and go and save and send back. Uh, we've been discussing that with Josh and Josh for technical reasons that he knows that are way above anything that I understand technique why technically he doesn't feel like that's going to be a workable solution for us. Um, and he explained it and about his fifth word into his explanation, I couldn't really follow anymore. So I nodded my head and said, yes, sir. Um, so it doesn't like it's going to be able to us to have type and print forms where the form can come to us and we can type and print or we can write and then have it be fillable forms and send back. So I'm not sure that that's going to be something that we can do uh, this quickly with this shorter turnaround. Um, and and I, I wish I could give you a better answer than that, other than to say people that know a lot more than I uh, definitely don't feel that that's going to be something possible for this year. Um, yeah, and Cassidy just asked, can FBA consider recommending to districts and so on ensemble events, especially for high schoolers, have 12 or 15 minutes instead of 10? Absolutely, yes. Um, we can um, look at that for sure. We know we need to go 12 and the possibility of looking at 15. And of course, that's a financial question that Michael uh, Antman actually raised earlier that we'll make sure that we can do that because of course, as soon as you go to 15 minutes, it, the judging becomes more expensive. And uh, so we just wanna make sure that we can do that, but we know that we can do 12 minutes for sure on all of those things. And students will still be able to buy two slots if they want to perform a longer solo or whatever it may be. But we know we can do 12 and we're going to look at being able to do more of them. Uh, Susan just typed that she did some of those type and print sheets for work and she can try and send them to us and I can forward those on to Josh and he can look at them. I know there's a lot of compatibility issues that he was speaking of as well, but we'll definitely look into it for sure. Um, okay. And there's so many great questions. I wish I could get to all of them. Um, but uh, Tom, I do appreciate Tom Viking just wrote uh, two performances that he judged the sheets that were sent to him in advance as PDF. He marked on them and then uh, sent them back or actually took a picture on his phone and sent them to the district chair. He said it took time, but it worked well. So we'll keep exploring those possibilities for sure. Um, John, if you would like, maybe take a few minute uh, a couple minute break here and then we can come back and start the next portion. Yeah, uh, I'm reading a lot of these things about how to get the sheets back and forth. Um, and, and I, I you, you guys are, this is the reason for all of this. Um, and it's not, we have the answers and you're going to listen and that's the way it's going to be. Um, people are talking about using document cams or just taking pictures and converting them to PD, PDFs or any of those things. Um, I think they're great ideas, and I think it, it would help expedite getting the sheets where they need to be. And I also think um, that, again, not to, to put all of this at the feet of the district chairs, as long as your district is in an agreement of what they would like their um, MPA to, to look like and how they want it to, to work, um, I, I think any one of these things can be used. And that, this is this is a great kind of think tank for us all to, you know, think of things that we haven't thought of, because when this first came up, uh, I called a few people from out of state wondering if anybody knew um, how to do any, um, uh, you know, distance adjudication or, or virtual adjudication. Um, they were all like, well, we were going to call you guys. So um, we're, we're all kind of playing Marco Polo with this, but I think we're getting to the answer and we're finding a way to do it. And hopefully uh, all the efforts that we're doing will never have to be used again. At least I hope I'm dead the next pandemic so then I don't have to uh, even deal with this. So with that being said, um, it is 7.53. Um, everybody go ahead and take a stretch and uh, get some more ice for your um, Coke or tea. And uh, then we will go ahead and resume at eight o'clock with the concert portion. Um, and uh, thank you all for being here. Thank you for the questions. Uh, and we're, we're trying to we're trying to answer them as we go. I've been sending some of them because they're very individual. I've been sending them uh, individual uh, kind of ideas of what to think about and what to do. 
So we'll see you guys at eight o'clock uh, for the next session for concert, which will also transfer to jazz. Uh, thank you very much. We'll see you in just a few minutes. Hey, Jim. All right. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right. Cool. Are we allowed to have a little humor to wake everybody up? No. No? No. <laughs> it's past my bedtime now, y'all. I get up at 3.50 a.m. with my wife now. Uh, for She's a nurse, and I'm tired now. <laughs> <laughs> well, what oh, are you doing so at 3.50? What do you do? Do you exercise? What do you do that early? I, just, I can't sleep, man. I mean, I'm up now. I'm on her schedule. It's terrible. So anyway, yeah, I've been awake for a long time. But anyway, it's all good. This is going well, y'all. And uh, Ian told me there's like 255 people online. So that's incredible, you guys. Um, thanks for what you Everybody you're who's anybody is on that list. That's incredible. It's incredible. Ian? Yes, sir. Before we get too far, those suggestions about all those PDF things are, are great. However, we want to make sure ultimately that we're not creating undue work or bogging down the district chairs. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so the next time that the executive board or all those district chairs meet, that has got to be the priority that we have. I, I would wager that district chairs are far more nervous about how this is going to go than adjudicators because there's a lot more on the line, a lot more moving parts that they've got to handle. So. Yeah. Just because we can do a PDF doesn't mean we should do a PDF. I, I would be the only thing I would, I would put out there, but. No, definitely. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of moving parts to that for sure. Here's to all of you, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't help but uh, look at the positive things that might come out of this strange year. You know, I know some things at school that we've been forced to do uh, like with technology and things like that. It's like, well, wait a minute. This is, this is a pretty cool thing to do anyway. So I'm, I'm keeping this routine. Uh, and I'm wondering if just some of the ways we communicate uh, uh, remotely might be more efficient for even when things get back to normal. So you never know. Uh, there could be some really cool uh, procedures or other things come out of this this year. Personally, I want to speak to people in person and I'm just not going to be happy until I see the sweat on Neil's forehead again. <laughs> All, you have to do is go out. All you have to do is go out to the links with him and just a couple, a couple rounds of golf, you'll see it. For those of us that are working for a living, uh, Mr. Jenkins, that's not possible right now. But I guarantee you, if I quit as soon as I'd like to, I will see you there. Yeah, well, I got to tell you, Gary Green had me sweating today. In fact, he made me play my best round that I've played in a long time. But Gary comes through with a 72 today for 18 holes. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I know. Wow. He took, he took the card. He said that's the first time in his life he's ever scored. Hit par. Jim, let me ask you a question. When you start talking, do you want me to put – that sheet up here and just kind of scroll as you talk or do you want to have it up beside us so we'll just put a link in the chat and people can look at it if they want to what do you suggest um do you really do you really <laughs> do you really want them seeing us <laughs> i'm just joking it's up to you all i don't care uh I, i'm is there a way to keep it like down in the corner or something like that there's not a way to do that just give it to them on the on the uh on the chat thing and then they can have it and they can pull it up yeah and then do you have another screen you, or you can just pull it up in front I'm, of I'm, your I'm, I'm looking right here at, at uh, another screen okay 
this is funny how the amount of people that are texting right that are on there. They're encouraging, man. You must have nicer friends than I do then. <laughs> hey, this is this platform is saving a lot of people a lot of money right now. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I'm gonna mute. Okay, welcome back everybody to our final session, which is uh, going to be hosted by no one other than Mr. Jim Matthews and Mr. Ian Schwint, um, in which case, if you can't be great, surround yourself with greatness. So with that being said, mm -hmm. I'm just going to go ahead and turn the rest of the evening over to these gentlemen. Um, and thank you for being here and thank you for all the great questions. Uh, we're going to do our best to keep up and, uh, guys, go ahead and take it away. All right. I'm wearing a mask because Ian said I should always wear a mask. That's true. <laughs> that's true. Hey, listen, thank you everybody for being here. I'm telling you. Um, just the effort that everybody's putting into this just shows how much uh, love and care we have for our students in, in the state of Florida. So I want to thank you on behalf of everybody. Uh, but I also want to thank Neil and Kathy and Ian and John and Josh also for all this. This is crazy um, of what they're doing. I'm not sure how many states are able to do this, but Florida's doing it. And it's because of the leadership of these people. So um, thank you to all of them. So appreciate it. Appreciate your leadership and, and everything you're doing. So we're going to hit right into the concert stuff. I'm going to take the lead on this a little bit. And then Ian's going to keep cutting in all the time. We want to go back and forth because we don't want to miss anything. Uh, and what you're going to find out tonight from us is what's different, not what the normal concert adjudication is like, but what's different this year and how do you have to think and approach it? What do you have to consider when we're talking about full ensembles? And so that's what the gist of this entire concert thing is, is for. And then toward the end, we're going to um, open it up to questions and answers as well. I think we're all getting a lot because you guys are so crazy intelligent uh, and you're helping us build that boat uh, while we're sailing. But uh, keep the questions coming in because this is really helping formulate everything before we hit the actual concert season. So um, the first thing that I could encourage you to do and I do every single time because I don't trust Jim Matthews. I don't trust me. I read through the adjudication manual every single time before the season begins, just so that I get back into the philosophy of uh, FBA and our former incredible uh, directors and adjudicators who are not with us anymore, who's, who've written these manuals. And uh, they, hit, they just help keep you aligned. So please, please, please read through the adjudicator's manual. It's very short. You can do it in a few minutes. Uh, it's always good to review philosophies and everything as well. Uh, if you're not familiar with the certain pieces, I asked Ian earlier if um, this is a practice of mine as well. If I look on MPA online and I notice pieces that I'm not familiar with, the first thing I do is I get right on JW Pepper or the publisher's websites or YouTube or wherever I can find the recordings. And I listen to them because I wanna be prepared. I don't want the first time I'm hearing that composition to be in front of those kids in front of that teacher after they put you know, a month or two of work into it. So uh, please um, check on, and Ian, it will be on MPI Online, correct the titles and everything. But in addition to that, everyone, we have made compensation to not only have the originals, which you're probably very, very familiar with, but what about the flex versions of that? If there's a flex arrangement of that, 
please listen to the flex arrangement as well because it's going to be a little bit different. Uh, some are more very uh, tastefully done though, so you're going to find some of the composers that have actually done their own flex arrangements and uh, those are really done well. So listen to not only the original but also the flex version of that when you check out your MPA online. Um, uh, align your mental attitude toward student focus. And I know we talk about this all the time. Uh, you go through my class, you know, for the initial thing, or you go through you know, Brian's class or anything. Who are we really adjudicating? And you, you know, we all know the answers to that. <laughs> I know very well, you know, that, that most of the comments that, uh, that the adjudicators made in the past, they weren't to my kids, they were to me. And I was growing so much every time somebody would nail me on something. It just made me change my whole teaching perspective. But in this case, this year, we have really got to everybody with kid gloves, with kid gloves, and with all the love you can possibly uh, give to these kids. Tell the truth, but tell the truth in love as much as you possibly can. And to the directors as well. Lots of tension. All of you are experiencing that in your classes. Uh, a lot of people are apprehensive. So I'm gonna ask every one of you adjudicators in the state of Florida here, would you please encourage everyone in your district, encourage them to do something toward MPA this year, correct? They can take any level of music they want. They can go for comments. They don't have to, you know, there's not, there's not gonna be any ratings. They can record them over and over and over again. Uh, you know, I'm even encouraging people uh, to do a field trip day if you want to. Do a field trip day and just record. You could do, uh, you know, one, we get a three week window, correct, Ian? You could uh, record them. Every district's a little different. Okay. Every district's a little different. But there's a good amount of time in, in between there. So you could record, you know, focus on the, you know, just a march for like a few days and then record it and take the, the recording you want. So just encourage them. Tell them also that the adjudicator is going to be you know, not, we don't want to say the word lenient but very um, careful on what we're saying. There's not gonna be anything harsh. I mean, we're really begging you guys to just completely walk in love as we make all these comments to the people. Um, uh, you're mainly speaking to students who are dealing with COVID issues, just like we are. Uh, you got some kids that will come in for the recording for you all or for these uh, ensembles they're gonna do that have never actually been in the class before. And they might come in just to record and uh, they're not used to it. They're not hearing other kids. They haven't practiced. They're not listening for blending and balance and all that. They're just trying to survive. So uh, just keep in mind that we're gonna give you some little suggestions and then it's on your printout here, uh, everything we're talking about tonight, but we just wanna make sure that you're hearing from us as well. Um, Ian, before I go on, do you have anything else to add to, to that up to that point? No, I think, no, I think, I think you hit it. All right, let's keep going then. Uh, introduce yourself as you normally would on, on the recordings. Um, it's sometimes when it's not live like that, and I've had an opportunity to do that uh, already for concert because of last season, we were actually at an event and uh, we did the first night and then they said, don't come back anymore. It's all been canceled, but a couple of bands sent their recordings and, and we re adjudicated them anyway. So you still introduce yourself, you still do the whole thing, um, you know, and let them know you know, that you really super appreciate that they're actually participating, that they're actually submitting recordings to you. Make a big deal out of that. We, again, I'm gonna agree with John. Man, I hope we don't ever have to do this again. And, you know, people say, you know, when the next pandemic will shoot, <laughs> I don't want it to be during my lifetime. But anyway, hopefully never again, but try to make it as much as you can, just like if you were on stage. So have their, your formality and all that kind of stuff as well. Uh, make a big deal out of them sending the recordings in. Um, let them you know about. Let them uh, know that you know understand about their difficult situations. We're just happy to hear them. Everybody, please do that. Beg you to do that. Uh, I personally, uh, if I send a tape in or send a recording in, I wouldn't want you to kid glove me so much that I'm not actually getting feedback. And Ian and I talked about this and I said, look, they're going to want real feedback. I mean, if they're going to go through all this effort, they do want your expertise. You guys are experts. I want to hear what you have to say. You know, I want you to give me comments on sound and articulation and phrasing, do all that stuff you do. Just be careful how we do it. And 
we're going to take into consideration some of the things that they're going through bell covers and recording on an iPhone or whatever. Like we'll, we'll get to that in just a minute, but uh, just keep in mind, we want it to be very honest, but again, tell the truth, but tell the truth in love. Okay. Um, ethics, just real quick on ethics and, and, and in my class and maybe, maybe they do this in the um, reader's certification as well. Only do what you would want. What are you laughing at, Ian? Did I do something? No, it's. I was. I was surprised Neil didn't jump in. It's renewal. We don't have recertification anymore. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Renewal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, <laughs> renewal. All right, so uh, only do what you would ever want somebody to do to you. <laughs> You've heard that before, right? So stay professional. Um, would I want you recording my band and keeping a re reference copy of that? If, if my performance wasn't good or sharing that with other people, absolutely not. Please only do. Would you want, would I want you going online and talking about my band or something like that on social media? You know, those kind of things, just be very careful about that. You know, if you shared a recording, Ian made a point here. He said, that might not even be legal. That might be illegal that you're you're sharing recorded music with other people there. So just try not to do that. Keep it very confidential. It's like going to a doctor's office. You know, there's that clause of, of confidentiality. So when you hear these bands, keep it to yourself. Give them your comments, destroy the recordings, send your stuff back in and leave it at that. Please don't talk about it or anything like that. I always, by the way, I always give the, uh, the teachers and uh, opportunities to, if they want to contact me, contact me. If they want to, is that okay, Ian? If they, they contact, email, or give you a phone call and talk through things that are going on, that's fine. We're all here. And I hope every one of you adjudicators makes yourself available to people like that because this is for enrichment and, and making progress. Um, listen to recordings in a very quiet place in your home, please, without any of all stuff going on in the background. <laughs> I've seen interviews and dogs are barking in the background and everything else like that. Try to find a really quiet place in your house, um, have a good stereo system or a good set of speakers. Uh, even if you take the sound bar for your TV and use that and you can plug that in. Uh, but somehow you have to have the recording playing in the background while you're recording something either to, through your voice recorder or something like that. So have a good quality speaker system. If you have to borrow one or talk to your district chairs about that, maybe somebody has it available, maybe band parents or whatever. Go ahead, Ian. And, and Jim, I think that's what Josh was saying earlier about setting up a Zoom meeting with yourself, so to speak, and you are recording your screen while it's playing. So you can be listening in really great headphones and you're talking over the top and then they can still hear at the same time. To me, when Josh was doing that, I thought he did it really fast and it sounded a little bit complicated. So I'm glad that he's gonna go back and do another video slower and he's gonna write out directions, but a way to do that. But it is important for us to think about, we're gonna be making comments over there playing. How are we gonna do that so they can hear themselves as we're talking to them? But I think Josh's method might be another great way to do that too. Awesome. And we're all going to learn that, you know, and everybody has different setups and stuff like that. So if Zoom works, that'd be awesome. Um, we talked about this also. So in the real time on stage, the band would play. And if a band director didn't give you any time <laughs> and they just got right back up on the podium again, you couldn't finish your comments. Now that they're going to be submitted to you, if you would like to, please don't, I don't think we should be stopping in the middle of a song and saying it because it's recorded, but I think go ahead and finish through the song, finish your comments like that. But if you want to pause that recording and continue to elaborate just briefly for a couple of minutes um, before you went on to the next uh, piece, it's your time. You're allowed to do that. Um, so anyway, we would encourage you to do that so you can finish your thoughts and or just play their whole program through and then do that at the end. But while the thoughts are fresh in your mind, go ahead and, and just put it on pause in between the numbers, give a little bit of you know, commentary on what you just heard, and then start the recording again into your next portion. Ian, you look like you want to say something. I was just going to say there, um, and it may come in that you're going to have separate uh, links or even files for each piece. So you may be doing three different links, which is fine, or it may come in as one. Don't it'll be fine it'll be easy to see but just don't get thrown off by that 
and and Jim, I'm, I'm going to just dwell on that for a second. Let's go ahead and decide that we're not going to pause a band's performance in the middle of their piece. They're playing something and something goes awry and you want to talk about it for a minute. It's going to be real tempting to go, wait, I'm going to pause the recording <laughs> for a second. Let me talk about what just happened and then we're going to continue on. Let's go ahead and agree that we're going to keep it a real performance and we're talking in real time as it happens. And just like in a real performance, we don't say everything that we can. Um, the reality is there's still three judges and the other judges will catch some things, but we need to be thinking about it on the other side of this. We're hoping that the directors will feel comfortable sharing these recordings with these students. Well, if we're stopping to talk all the time and doing all these things, that's gonna be very disjointing for those poor kids listening in class. And by the time you hear three different directors do this, uh, three different adjudicators do the same thing, that's a long time. So let's just go and record, agree that we're gonna to try to do the best we can and we are not going to stop the recordings in the middle of a band's piece, but we'll let that piece play all the way to the end. And then Jim, just like you were saying, if we want to wait for a minute before we start the next piece to finish up some thoughts, great. You know, just like as if we'd raise our arm to say, yep, go ahead and start the next piece. We can still control that part of it. So sorry. Thanks, Jim. Let me jump in. No, awesome. I want to ask if you could go on to where uh, on the sheet there where it says new to COVID adjudicating, because these are really your thoughts there. Would you mind doing that or do you want me to do that? So, oh, on the new to COVID. Yeah, absolutely. I can do that. Um, so some things to think about, I mean, nothing that I've written here is things that you don't know. You know every single one of these, but I think it's going to be important for us to have this in our mindset because it's so easy to slip out of it. Uh, we want to make sure that this is an evaluation, meaning that we are going to talk about things for improvement, ways that they can become a better group, but then we need to be evaluating things they're doing really well particularly this year. We need to rejoice and get excited. And Jim was saying, get excited about the fact that they even made a recording, submitted it. We need to get excited about every little thing that they do well and make sure that's part of what it is. I know that when friends send me tapes to uh, listen to their, their last rehearsal before MPA or whatever it is, well, that'd be too late, but you know, rehearsal, that I get into the mode of just picking everything apart because that's what I need to do at that moment. But in this case, we're evaluating. And so we want to make sure we take time to do that. And I know you guys already do that, but just to keep it in our minds. Um, now, Jim uh, mentioned earlier, and some other people I have too, you can make recordings as many, you can record the band as many times as you want to. And they may be submitting audio or they may be submitting video and audio recordings where, it's, where you can see what's happening, you may not. And we left that open-ended because some people may not be able to make high quality videos, but they can audio only. And so we want to give them a chance to do that. And the question came up, well, then couldn't the band just record the Marine band and send a record of the Marine band? And the answer is yes, they could, but what's the point? They're not going to get a rating. Nothing changes. And they just wasted $150 for us to tell them the Marine band sounds pretty good. So, um, you know, that, that's why that's left open there, but we have to forget that they can make the recordings as many times as they want to. And we have to approach it as if that was the very first time that they performed it. That was a live performance on stage. No matter how many times we think they recorded it, no matter if we think they edited or anything else, we have to treat it as a live performance because for many bands, it may very well be. That may be the only time they got on a stage. That may be the only time they were able to bring in kids from home. They may have had a special after school rehearsal there are all kinds of things that we can't know, and really we don't need to know. We need to adjudicate it as if it is a live performance in that morning. Well, why don't you go back and record that? Mm, it's it, that's just that's something that we're not part of. We're going to treat it like it's a live performance. All of you are really good band directors, or you wouldn't be adjudicators. But let me encourage you again to record your band often. Not only does it make your band better, but it gets our ears used to translating what a recorded sound sounds like coming from a live. So we know what the live is, and then we know what it sounds like going to record it, because that's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with recordings that we've got to somehow extrapolate what that band sounded like live, and we can't. We want to try to do the best we can, and then if we're in the habit of recording our own bands and listening back to it, and our ears are learning how to differentiate and how to figure out what the recorded sound sounded like live, 
then we have a better shot at adjudicating accurately too. So just to encourage you not only to record your band because it makes your band better, but it also will help us become more effective adjudicators when we get there. Um, be careful not to dwell on any issue too long, and, and we already know that. We already know that, and you guys already do that. But remember that recordings make little problems way bigger. So little intonation issues become much bigger when you strip out all the overtones in a recording. And now those intonation issues stick out a whole lot more. And our ears going to be drawn to it a lot. Be careful and guard against it. We know that already, but we just need to know that it's going to be exasperated and exaggerated in a recorded environment. Um, and remember that many of the, the bands are not recording in professional environments. So often when we listen to recordings, we're listening to professional groups. We're listening to the presidents. Are, we're listening to North Texas. We're listening to rural Northern Co whatever it is you listen to. And so we're just used to that level of recordings. And of course, that's what it sounds like. Well, these bands aren't using professional mics in a professional sound stage with editing and mixing capabilities and a huge soundboard and then their ability to go back and edit and put things together. This might be a band director standing in front of their band with their iPhone saying, all right, y'all, here we go from the top. And then they play it. So we have to remember that these are recordings made in an amateur fashion and they won't sound like all those recordings that we're used to listening to. You guys know that. And again, like I said, none of this is new to y'all, but just something to think about again of, oh yeah, oh yeah, when I go in, that's the ears I have to listen through. And then of course we all know bell, those bell covers are affecting the tone, intonation, dynamic contrast, all kinds of stuff. Playing with a face mask on, it may not be the same as a normal breathing. So all those things start to affect it as well. So what can we talk about then? What should we talk about? How do we approach it? And this is where I'm going to throw it back to Jim. He's put this list here for us. And by the way, the piece of paper that Jim or the document that Jim and I are talking from, it's in the link over there in the chat if you hadn't had a chance to see that, if you want to follow along as well. Um, but Jim, if you want to talk about some of the adjudication elements we can talk about and how we go about doing that. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I want to throw one more thing in here, um, Dr. Delane Chapman who has a uh, clinic coming up at the FMA, I think I'm okay, pl shameless plug, uh, just texted me a few minutes ago and said, don't forget about um, uh, the ability to call the other adjudicators and confer, are you still allowed to do that? And we, um, she was on the panel that I was on that got called off at the COVID thing <laughs> when it first hit. And uh, so was Ace Adjourn again. And so we wanted to make sure that we were still on track like we were as a panel. I don't know how this is gonna work. I'm gonna throw it out to you. So prior to uh, sending in our sheets, we, we talked with each other. We had already had all of our stuff done just like you should if you were sitting on a, on a panel. Uh, and then we wanted to make sure we were lining everything up. Can you, what's the thought process going on in me and Swint's mind on that? Well, we're not giving ratings. So it's Correct. okay. That's right. So it's only it's only right. so comments. just gave comments of what we heard, and we may not all be listening to them at the same time. Um, and I'll just go ahead and go there for a second with the nuts and bolts. Please of this. do. If you are um, contracted to adjudicate for a concert MPA, everything is submitted, and again, we're still working out the details on this, but we're looking at it from the deadline date that everybody in the district has to have their link uploaded and copies of their original score uploaded for you to look at, you would have one week to listen to all of those bands. And if um, if your band, if there's more than, I think we looked at the number of 35, if there are more than 35 bands to adjudicate, we were talking about adding on one extra day per five bands. So if it's 40 bands, you'd actually have eight days to listen to them, just trying to look at it for what's a realistic amount of bands that we could listen to at one time. We're also looking at, and we're still talking to the jo with Josh about the possibility that if a band has a, or a district has a two week window and some bands record on the very first day and upload it right away, we as an adjudicator may be able to go in early and check that and start uh, getting ahead a little bit and doing those things. Um, but those are the parameters we're working with right now. And I wish I could tell you definitively, this is exactly what it's going to be, but we're still working some stuff out to make sure that it's going to be right for everybody. So Jim, when we're talking about conferring, um, I don't know that we'll all be listening to the same band at the same time. And it might be that you just got done listening to this band, 
but I might not listen to them for another week. Mm-hmm. So that might get a little bit tricky in that way too. So I don't think there's anything wrong with calling back and forth and saying, hey, is this what you heard? Make sure that I'm on the right path. I want to make sure I'm not being too hard as far as in my comments. But I, I, I'm not sure that it's going to be quite as easy as it may be in a normal year. That's just very good. Very well put. That's why you're there. That's why you're prez. All right. So uh, the things that we're going to talk about right now are just basically extractions from the three categories on the uh, concert adjudication sheet. And so there are some that you're not going to be really able to address this year because of the COVID situation. So with kid gloves on again, um, we're going to go ahead and, and, and say what doesn't change, what doesn't change, regardless of whether it's COVID or not. So the first one is postures. And I just like to equate it with a stance. Every sport has a stance. Well, band has a stance and every particular instrument has its stance. So we wanna make sure that we have the uh, proper postures that you can still address should you get videos because they're allowed to submit audio and or videos or not and or, but videos. Uh, And so if there's videos there and they're not doing the proper postures, that's open game. You wanna help encourage uh, an adjudicator should be um, backing up what the teachers probably told them a hundred times, you know? And so just uh, address those little things there, continue to do that hand positions and everything. To me, uh, right there, if your hands are relaxed and all that kind of stuff, you're going to have better technique. It's all going to work out better for the future. So always just see what you see on those videos and address if it were your band or your students, you know, uh, anyway, I'm going to leave it at that and not expound on it. Uh, A big breath or a good breath is the same whether there's COVID or not. Uh, The problem is the masks, you know, and so uh, that's going to factor into it. But anyway, you always want to make sure that they're getting that great breath in and then that they're able to distribute a little bit differently. So I'm going to go ahead and cut right to masks just for a second. What do masks do to our sounds? We've all heard it. I walk in some band rooms (laughs) And it's like, oh my gosh, do you hear how sharp these kids are, you know? And it's like the whole level of the band is just sharp. So I took my uh, trumpet and I played and it is a different tuning because of the bell covers and especially what kind of material you have on those bell covers. So you guys aren't gonna be able to address all that, but uh, the volumes aren't gonna be as much. You might say, man, you guys gotta do a lot more dynamics. Well, be careful. They've got you know, shields on their instruments. So their dynamic contrast might not be as much. Their intonation might be a little bit different. Now, you know whether it's gonna be a little bit because of a bell cover or is it just because they have poor tone qualities or because they're really out of tune. So you're gonna have to kind of weigh those things and might have to mention a couple of things. I'm not sure if it's due to the bell covers or your masks or whatever like that, but here's what I'm hearing and then leave it at that. Ian, you wanna say something on that? No, I I agree with you completely. It might be, listen, guys, I know you're fighting with all of these issues, the bell covers and sitting farther apart. But when we get back to normal, here's some things you can do to continue to work on intonation. Awesome. Tone qualities, always as an adjudicator, if you talk to 100 adjudicators, probably 100 of them are going to say the number one thing is tone quality. So, um, you know, I'm going to encourage you, as I always do uh, in my classes, And that is, do you, teachers and adjudicators, do you have an awesome sound model in your head for what a beautiful flute, oboe, clarinet, bassoon, sax, I mean, do you have all those models in your head? So I've shared with you my most updated list, uh, model musician list. And if you've never seen that list, please get it. And, you know, when you're getting ready in the mornings or when you're driving to schools or work or whatever, like whatever you're doing, Every day, just put on one, just put on somebody so that you're getting good models in your head. This works great for solo ensembles as well. I always now, because every kid has a phone, and if they don't, I say, you have somebody out in the hallway there? Have them come in and take a picture of these, you know, euphonium players or trumpet players or whatever. Um, And that's really helped a lot of kids out. Do you, adjudicator, have a, a model sound in your head for every instrument? And can you talk real quick? those top three to five things that it takes to have a great embouchure. And if you don't, don't address it because you're going to give out wrong information. So anyway, but try to study and keep all that uh, before you all the time. But uh, see the model musician uh, list there and just get all those in your head. uh, And just keep in mind that you're probably not going to hear the true thing because of all the the masks and the um, bell covers and everything. But tone quality, still address it. 
that's still something you can address. No to accuracy is not going to change because of COVID. It's not going to change because of uh, bell covers or masks or anything like that. So are there, uh, that's all still on the table. You can read that as well. I'm going to mention this because I still hear people today, even though I've preached this for years, stop saying circle that. Circle that doesn't mean a darn thing. What does circle mean? Sorry. Okay, that's a rant. It goes right in front of the note. <laughs> we, we need to talk about a marking system. So maybe encourage the band director. If you're hearing a lot of wrong notes come out, maybe encourage that they develop some type of marking system. But that should be the key signature notes affected by the key signature accidental right in front of that note, not above it, not below it, not after it, because that's why they're getting so many notes happening wrong. That circling is the worst thing you could tell any person. Sorry. Uh, counting's not going to change. So their proper preparedness of the counting. So you can go ahead and go there as well. So that's not a really kid glove thing. That's just like encouraging them to be very precise. Uh, the only thing is when the precision on that, these kids were working at home and, you know, the delay in sounds of band classes and all that kind of stuff. So a lot of band directors are, are encouraging their kids to play along with recordings and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we just heard a great presentation by Alex Kaminsky the other night. And uh, he was saying the same thing, you know, you could play recording online and the kids can play along with that and everything. So just kind of get that really grouping and the precision and counting together and encourage them to use their technology to help them out with that if, if necessary uh, or possible. Uh, articulations aren't gonna change. They might be a little bit more muffled because of, of um, bell covers. But if I'm gonna send in a recording as a director, I might really address that. If, that, if it's not coming out crispy and clear when it's supposed to be crispy and clear, I might, I might have them do it a little bit more just so the recording is really crispy and clear. I don't know if you all agree with that or not, but you know, test it out. But being unified in that, uh, encouraging them. I like to tell uh, adjudicators in the class, if you can go back to the warm up, if you could always, anything that's going on inside those pieces, if you can relate it back to the warm up, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm pushing people, but there's, there's certain people that are just masters at that. So when I say names, I'm not name dropping. But when Alex Kaminsky was working with the summer band workshop a couple of years ago, he said something really important. He says, the warm up is the meal. <laughs> the warm up is where everything comes from all your musical fundamentals and everything else has sound and articulations and dynamics and phrasings and all that. And the literature is the dessert. Did I say that right, Ian? And yes. man, if you think like that, as you're adjudicating, if you could relate now, when you're doing your warm ups, we might want to address, you know, doing certain little, you know, one articulation a, a day or something like that, just trying to make things clear and clean. But anyway, with all that said, as they're still on the, on the platter for uh, being looked at and mentioned um, by the adjudicators this year. Blending skills is gonna be a little bit more different, di you know, difficult because there's gonna be kids that aren't there and they're maybe there for the recording for the first time. So to me, I would encourage, uh, and I'm not gonna read this verbatim, you can read it on your sheet there, but that pyramid of sound is super, super important. Um, and, and blending, blending imbalance is different, but blending, simply mixing two, two or more different sounds together. So when they're doing at home and they're all at home by themselves, they're not gonna get that. So as soon as they hit a live atmosphere with any other musician for the rest of their life, their job is to try to, to mix in and blend in, not dominate, not play too much louder or softer than the other person they're playing with. We can still encourage that, you know, even though they can't perfect it. Um, because they're not there all the time. All right, fitting your sounds into each other. And then you can see the little balance thing that we all got from Jack Crew, uh, those four key instruments, flute and horn and euphonium and tuba. If they don't have that, then go to the next instrument down or go to the same uh, part of the same um, soprano, alto, tenor, bass family. It's all there, I'm not gonna read it to you. I like uh, to talk about three pyramids of sound uh, as a basis, not only from the bottom up, which we're all taught, you know, that's pyramid of sound, but also melody, right? Melody and counter melody, and then least is the accompaniment part. We all hear, especially in middle school bands, but not exclusively in middle school. Um, accompaniment stuff playing so loud, it's like, who has the melody? You can't even hear it. Those are still things that you can address. So just be, you know, kid gloves again, but still address that sound pyramid as well. And then a sound pyramid of, of parts in there. So if you have first, second, and third clarinet parts, that first shouldn't be blowing it all out. 
let the bottom people play it out more. You can address that still, and that's not going to offend anybody, we hope, okay? Um, because the higher parts are automatically going to be heard more. Our intonation is going to change, everybody. Intonation is going to be a very difficult thing. So I would encourage everybody to still address intonation, still address people using their tuners uh, on their phones free or smart music or, you know, something online and learning the couple of tendency notes for every instrument. And if they could address those tendency notes on their own, you could encourage that and that's okay. Uh, you might be opening up some, some windows or some doors to the band directors to encourage them to come up with like a little list of tendency notes. Uh, when playing with another person, they just need to try to listen. We're not gonna go into this too much because that's gonna be changed with the bell covers and masks and everything. All right, dynamic contrast. Please, whenever you talk about dynamics, if you're not hearing them enough, please say, I'm not sure if it's because of, you know, all the covers and everything like that, but maybe try to over-exaggerate dynamics. You know, I hear Ian's band when I go in, in there and listen to him. He's got them playing so soft. And then he has them play to the grotesque part, really, literally. And it's a construction zone. <laughs> And then he goes, now everybody take it back a notch. So from that rah sound, they kick it back. And it's just, even with the mask, even with the bell covers, you still hear a real big dynamic difference. So um, just encourage them to, to do um, dynamic, more dynamic contrast. This next one's not gonna change regardless of um, uh, phrasing, is not gonna change regardless of COVID or not. Did they identify how long the phrases should be or where they are going to breathe or not breathe, uh, whether they're going to take um, um, stagger breathe or not, uh, and then phrase shaping. Those two things, COVID or not, that's still going to be on the platter for you guys to talk about. Uh, and then I'm going to wrap it up here, Ian, and we're going to give some opportunities for people to ask questions. I love to talk about growth mindset. We should never stop learning. Not even, the day we die, we should be learning something. And then you're really going to learn after that, maybe. Anyway, but so the uh, growth mindset says that you continually try to grow and learn. So if you look at it, uh, always be listening to great models on the uh, model musician list. There's some great conductors on there. Um, Yannick, um, I can't remember his last name. Yannick, the, the conductor. Oh, my gosh watch his facial expressions. But anyway, uh, as a conductor, watch the conductors, listen to choirs, listen to those jazz groups that are on there, listen to the uh, individuals for that. Um, it's not an exhaustive list, but it's there, it's a start. Um, can you trade recordings with people? Ian and I torture each other and that's okay because we grow when we torture each other. Um, we'll be driving somewhere and he'll say, let's listen to this. And so we listen to that and then he'll pick it apart. And, and one day we were driving, he goes, can we trade uh, adjudication recordings? So we pulled them up from MPA online and we're driving, listen to each other. And he's like, Jim, did you really mean to say it like that? <laughs> or, you know, I didn't understand what you were saying or something. So listen back, he'll go on MPA online and have the guts to pull up one of your recordings that you did, because you're able to do that and listen to your recordings and hear what you say. I'm gonna also encourage one more thing. Do you remember how we used to get the tapes, the, the, the cassette tapes? Find your best re recordings of the adjudicators you, you admire the most. I still go back to some of them. I still have the cassette tapes. And I just love the way some people um, presented to, to me and to the students and I'm like, I wish I was like that person. And so just get those and, and help you uh, with, with your models and that. Um, and you can read the rest of the list there. Um, clinic as many bands as you can, because a clinic is more like an adjudicator rather than a band director rehearsing their bands over and over and again. So is there anything else that we need to talk about before opening up to questions? I, th I think we hit a lot of the what, what you and I talked about was the approach of what we're going to do, the actual adjudication part. So I think what we have left is just a couple nuts and bolts things. Um, a lot of questions are coming in about, uh, well, sorry, before we, well, one of the nuts and bolts things is what, Jim, you just talked about is practice making recordings with in a virtual setting. And we need to practice that. And, and Josh alluded to that, and, and I know we're all going to do it. And once we get those instructions written out and you know exactly how to do it, any YouTube video will work of any band anywhere and just practice 
doing it um, and just practice it with the YouTube link and all those kind of things. The other nuts and bolts part is scores. How do scores work? Well, I don't know. And um, I, I, I hate to say it that way, but we're still working on that part because we want to make sure that we do everything legally. Um, it has been suggested that students hold, for an ensemble, students would hold up their piece of paper to the camera before they before they make their video or if it's a live performance through youtube or through a zoom sorry they'd hold up their adjudication thing well that may not be possible in concert band yet uh the, we don't know how that's going to work particularly if they make an audio only recording we um also don't know if we need to buy still buy for uh, originals one for you to conduct from and three to give the judges those are all things that we would love to be able to make that decision but we can't make that decision because we don't have the legal uh, understanding to truly do it but there are people working on it very diligently and uh, i can promise you that by the time all these things happen use an adjudicator will have plenty of forewarning on how it's going to work and you'll understand what needs to happen from your side of it uh, but we are definitely very aware that that is a big concern for many of us, me included, uh, and, and that is definitely being addressed and working through it as quickly as we can to make those things happen. Um, I'm going to go ahead and grab some of the, okay, so Sherry Sleeper was asking about the um, how exactly we're going to be paid as adjudicators. That's a great question. Um, I don't know if you all noticed it this year, but when you sign the contracts, you all agree to do everything for free. You're doing it all as volunteers. Okay, I'm just kidding. I want to see if Jim was listening. He's not. I am uh, listening. Whatever, man. So, no, it's uh, it, so an ensemble. But look, man, John Seaver actually turned the screen on for that one. A lot of the numbers of the participants just went way down. That's all out. 